Hello guys, this is what if Naruto was neglected by Jiraiya and was trained by the Toads. Let's begin. Damn it, brat. How many times do I have to tell you this? The basics need to be learned first before I teach you anything, exclaimed Jiraiya to Naruto currently glaring at him. Basics? The basics you want me to learn, I did already. Besides, they involve someone with genin level chakra. I have more chakra in my body than most kages. And that's without Kyuubi in my gut, countered Naruto with Jiraiya waving him off. Bah! Excuses. 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 You produce more excuses from your mouth than you do shadow clones. Besides, the QB's power is more important to learn at this point. Something you have been failing to do, said Jiraiya while looking at Naruto with what could only be described as disappointment. I have been trying. It fucking hurts. We have been at this for a year and half arrow sinning. And all you have done is tell me to draw on the fox's power. You don't say how. You just bark out a command and expect me to do it. I'm not some kami damned pet, exclaimed Naruto with Jiraiya scowling further. So what if it hurts? It's called pain. Get used to it. You think Orochimaru is out there in one of his bases coddling Sasuke right now? No. He's putting him through the ringer to get him to become the strongest host possible to take over in another year and a half from now, said Jiraiya with Naruto's eyes narrowing. At least Orochimaru is teaching Sasuke. What do you do all day? Peep on women. Drink yourself stupid at bars. And going to brothels to fuck some woman with more STDs than a shinobi village has shinobi. And with M.Y. money no less you fucking leech, countered Naruto with Jiraiya now looking increasingly angry at the accusation. Even if it was true. How I spend my day when I'm not teaching a worthless student like you is my business, Brett. Besides, consider you paying for my leisure time the cost of learning under such a great shinobi like me, Jiraiya shot back smugly. You were supposed to teach and train me to be a strong shinobi. You haven't done any of that since we started. How are you going to explain this to Granny when we get back in the next year and half, challenged Naruto while Jiraiya shrugged. I'll tell her what I feel is true. You suck as an apprentice and it was a waste of time in the three years out of the village to train you. Which so far, I have been proven right about, declared Jiraiya while Naruto growled. It is called you putting effort into training your student, you lazy son of a bitch. Not give said student complex material he can't understand all to run off to peep on women just to write your fucking smut, exclaimed Naruto with Jiraiya getting increasingly anger. It's called learn by doing brat. I'm not going to hold your hand every single day. I'm not going to be around to help you learn this. You want to be strong? Stronger than Sasuke in the next year and a half? It's called doing it yourself. It's called stop being a failure and to stop being a fucking baby when things don't go your way. Jiraiya shot back at the boy while Naruto looked livid at his words. You don't do anything. How the Yandame Hokage learned from you is a miracle right now. Hell, He'd probably still be alive right now if Orochimaru had been his sensei all those years ago, exclaimed Naruto while Jiraiya's eyes widened before they narrowed in anger and saw red. And in that moment, Jiraiya stuck Naruto hard. And he didn't stop. He kept hitting Naruto again and again and again while giving the boy zero time to counter, block, or say anything to make Jiraiya stop. You little brat. How dare you say that to me? I trained the greatest Hokage to ever take the mantle since the Shodan himself. And you insult my legacy by saying you would have been better off with Orochimaru as his sensei, questioned Jiraiya while he stared down at the barely breathing and bloody Naruto looking up at him with blood in his eyes. 
Angry defiant blue eyes that said you fucking bet I do, which only angered Jiraiya even more. You are a failure for a student. A mistake. When this is over, I'm requesting you be put into the shinobi reserves and confined into the village. With my words against yours, I know Tsunade will side with me on this. So enjoy your time outside of Kanoha, Brett. This will most likely be the last time you have it. And before you think of running out on me for other places, don't forget the Akatsuki is after to you. I'm the only protection you have right now against them. And even without them being a factor, I would track you down myself to bring back to Kanoha to be imprisoned for desertion, said Jiraiya seriously before giving the brat one more final kick to the body. The Sanin stomped off to enjoy his vices and forget Naruto's words. And the image of Minato frowning at him or Kushina's pissed off expression at what he just did to their son. Bah! He needed a hot woman to sleep with and a hard drink to make them go away. Time skipped some time later. It would be hours before the fox healed Naruto's physical injuries, but the mental ones still remained deep within. Naruto hated Jiraiya right now. Hated the Senen's words of being a failure. His threats. His recommendation he would bring to Tsunade to have him in the Jinin reserves. It was an insult. A humiliating insult to any shinobi put there. No self-respecting shinobi worth their reputation would be caught dead there. They did so little and were so weak. Their skill level was the middle area between academy student and genin. Naruto vowed not to be so weak. He needed to get stronger. Stronger to the point where all the past Hokages combined were weak, sickly children compared to him. To get so strong that even Uchiha fucking Madara himself would have pissed his fucking pants if they ever crossed paths in life in a hypothetical situation. But how to do it? Leave? Bah. Jiraiya would track him down before he got out of the country they were in right now. Besides, the Senen's words about the Akatsuki were true. They could get him too if Naruto wasn't careful. He needed a place to train, to learn from competent teachers, and above all else, grow stronger. There is a way, said Kyuubi while Naruto found himself in his mind to see the fox. And that would be, asked Naruto with skepticism in his voice. The Toads. Reverse summon yourself to their mountain. Tell them what Jiraiya said to you, advised Kyuubi with Naruto looking unsure. Won't they side with Jiraiya in his actions? Sell me out to him, asked Naruto with the fox shaking his head. While the fool is their primary summoner, they do not answer to him. Despite what he may say to the contrary, it is quite the opposite. His actions shame him as well as them, but the difference is the fool doesn't care about it. The man is blind to the lives of those around him and their feelings. Whether they are friend or foe, it doesn't matter. You know this intimately with the way the fool has treated you all this time, said Kyuubi with Naruto nodding since the fox saw his memories of his time with the Sanin and was not impressed. So I go to the toads, tell them what Jiraiya has been doing, what he said, and ultimately ask them for training. All the while hoping they agree with me and not him. Why doesn't it sound so simple, even when I say it, asked Naruto with QB smirking. Because it's not. While I am confident they will side with you, they still have to keep the fool out of reach of your person. They would need a reason to keep him away from the mountain and keep you there at the same time. All without him knowing you are on the mountain. Add to the fact, if you are missing for a long enough time, Jiraiya will report to your new Hokage, and this will no doubt cause problems for her when word gets out of your sudden disappearance, said Kyuubi with Naruto frowning for a brief moment. Not my problem, said Naruto with Kyuubi looking surprised. Really? I'm surprised you would be so cold to the woman on this. If you don't mind me asking, why? questioned Kyuubi with Naruto frowning. Because she is family, answered Naruto with Kyuubi frowning. 
You lost me, remarked QB. She is from the Senju clan. From what I saw in a beaten up textbook thrown in the trash once, the Senju clan is related to the Uzumaki clan. We're cousin clans. Even Granny's own grandmother was an Uzumaki, said Naruto with QB narrowing its eyes at the remembrance of Mito and how she locked him away until his anger was no longer there. Bah! What did she know? She sealed him away and never looked back. Why wouldn't he be bitter after being sealed within the woman? And all for fighting against his will. Not to mention being sealed into Mito's successor, followed by being chained and crucified to a small moon. Used by an Uchiha again and finally sealed once more into another host to be used for his power without permission. The Biju had little doubt the woman would be so calm and understanding if she had to go through what he did. So you are going to spite them both. One for neglect and being a proper sensei, and the other for being a neglectful distant cousin, commented QB with Naruto nodding. Don't you agree? She went on and on about losing her brother and lover. As if it was the end of the world. But the moment she hears my name, she doesn't bat an eye, exclaimed Naruto with QB thinking it over and surprised the boy by agreeing with him. You do have a point. Both your clans are related at some point, and I do know that the first Hokage married Mito all those years ago. Meaning your new Hokage is part Uzumaki to a certain degree. Something she has either clearly forgotten or no longer cares about, said QB with Naruto nodded. All the more reason to make her remember, said Naruto with QB smirking. And to think, I wanted to rip you to pieces and devour your remains while picking your bones out of my teeth, remarked QB with Naruto glaring. Just try it. I'll give you indigestion for the next 1,000 years, threatened Naruto before he vanished from his mind. Given who your mother is, I do believe it, remarked QB with a sigh knowing the boy's mother was exact same way in terms of personality. The fox knew that all the boy needed was the right push, the right shove, and maybe even a good punch to the face to send him the right direction. His mother was the same way in many aspects from what he recalled of her when learning how to do things. In the end, it resulted in a super-powered Uzumaki with the skills to punch you through five buildings, eight fences, and two windows. The Biju would know since he remembered how Kushina did that to Jiraiya once when he mumbled she was getting fat when pregnant with Naruto. It set a new record on how far a woman could hit Jiraiya with super strength. One that Tsunade had not been able to break. Kanoha Hokage's office months later. What do you mean Naruto is gone, Jiraiya? asked Tsunade in an angry seething tone that spelled doom for her teammate depending on his next choice of words. I mean he's gone. Vanished. Taken away, exclaimed Jiraiya while seeing Tsunade looking even angrier. Explain, commanded Tsunade with Jiraiya fidgeting a bit. Okay. It all started a few months ago. The brat and I got into argument about stuff one day. Things were said. Words were spoken. Most of it is fault, by the way, explained Jiraiya while Tsunade smashed her fist on the desk. Jiraiya. Focus. What happened, commanded Tsunade while Jiraiya began to sweat more. Well, after I left to vent my frustrations elsewhere, I came back to our campsite, but when I did, he was not there, replied Jiraiya while Tsunade didn't look pleased. And you didn't become concerned something might have happened to him when you weren't around, because, asked Tsunade while Jiraiya wouldn't look her in the eyes. Because I didn't expect him to leave the campsite for various reasons, said Jiraiya with Tsunade's killer intent rising. What were the various reasons Jiraiya, demanded Tsunade while Jiraiya nervously let out chuckle. Funny thing, I might have mentioned the Akatsuki, threatening to hunt him down to bring back to Kanoha to be made a reserve genin if he tried to run, and I also might have violently lashed out at him for saying something hurtful, 
said Jiraiya before he let out a whimper when Tsunade rose from her chair and looked absolutely murderous. First off, who or what gives you the authority to threaten Naruto and saying I would be placing him into the Jinin reserves? Second, why in the name of all that good and true in this world did you beat him so badly that he would consider leaving your so-called protection in the first place? demanded Tsunade knowing only she had that power and only if the boy was extremely weak without showing any promise at all. His fight with Kabuto when recruiting her to be Hokage showed Tsunade that Naruto had a mountain load of potential. It wasn't my fault. The brat actually had the nerve to say Minato would have been better off learning under Orochimaru of all people over me. That Minato had a greater chance of being alive had Orochimaru been his sensei and not me. As far as I am concerned, the brat deserved his beating. As for making him a reserve genin, I figured after I gave my official report on him being a failure in learning under me, it would happen, defended Jiraiya while Tsunade was showing incredible willpower to not slug him in the face. And what did you do or say that resulted in him saying such things? And what made you think your recommendation alone would merit him being placed in the Jinin reserves, asked Tsunade with Jiraiya frowning and looking away. I didn't do anything. It was the brat. I mean, all he did was doing on this trip is complain and whine about his training, said Jiraiya while Tsunade narrowed her eyes further. And what did you train him in exactly? asked Tsunade curiously. Well, this and that. Focusing on drawing on QB's chakra. And you know, stuff, explained Jiraiya weakly while Tsunade marched right up to him and looked the man dead in the eyes. Be specific, Jiraiya. What stuff did you teach him? demanded Tsunade while Jiraiya slowly took several steps back. Basics. The kid needed to know basics. So I tried teaching it to him. He was failing at it and quite miserably too. I mean how could a genin not handle the genin based chakra control training I gave him is beyond me, said Jiraiya while Tsunade's eyebrow was now twitching violently. Jiraiya, do you hear yourself when you talk? Much less think? You just said you were training Naruto as if he had genin level reserves. Exercises meant for Jinin with Jinin level chakra or slightly higher, said Tsunade slowly like she was talking to someone not all there in the head. Yes so, oh, asked Jiraiya in confusion. This is Naruto we are talking about. Not Kiba. Not Shikamaru. Not Sakura. Not even that prick of an Uchiha. We are talking about Naruto. The boy whose chakra levels are up there with that of Akage. How the fuck is he supposed to do Jinin exercises with the amount of chakra running through his body, demanded Tsunade with Jiraiya looking like a light bulb went on his head. Oh. Well, when you put like that, I, uh, shit, said Jiraiya while feeling slightly guilty and stupid right now. What else have you done, Jiraiya? demanded Tsunade since she knew there was more the fool wasn't telling her. Well, we did focus on trying to draw out the QB's chakra, but the boy complained the whole time. Saying it hurts, I am in pain, and my body feels like it's being pulled apart like a whiny baby, said Jiraiya before Tsunade quickly grabbing him by his shirt and brought him closer to the point where their heads nearly touched. That's because the fox was fighting the seal you nidwit. Did you really expect the Biju would let Naruto takes it power by force? questioned Tsunade angrily. Well, yeah. What, the seal doesn't allow for Naruto force the fox into submission and takes its power for himself? asked Jiraiya with Tsunade letting out a noise like she was dealing with a complete moron and wanted to cry over how stupid he was being. No you dumb shit. Had you gone over the notes Minato left behind, you would know that was not the purpose of the seal. And the fact you didn't even notice this or examine the seal yourself proves just how much of an idiot you really are. Even worse, aren't you supposed to be a seal master? What possessed you to do things in such a reckless manner? 
Why not research how the Jinchuriki and IWA or Kumo drew on the power of the Biju before trying anything of that magnitude, asked Tsunade while Jiraiya looked nervous. Come on, Tsunade Heim. I didn't have time for it. Three years goes by pretty fast. I had to wing it. Besides, the brat should have just took the pain. So what if it hurt? We all have to go through receiving pain to get stronger, said Jiraiya before he was thrown against the wall. You baka. Don't you realize that your method of training was putting his health at risk? Do you even care about him at all? asked Tsunade while she stomped over to him. Truthfully? No, I don't, said Jiraiya seriously, which made Tsunade stop dead in her tracks. What? Why? He's Minato's son, exclaimed Tsunade while Jiraiya grimaced. Naruto may be my late student's child, but the kid has none of the talent. Even if my way of teaching him was, off in some manner, the potential should have shown itself easily, remarked Jiraiya bitterly since he was hoping to get another easy prodigy for a student. Perhaps your way of training him was wrong. Or perhaps it was the lack of training, said Tsunade in an accusing tone. You think I would do that, asked Jiraiya while mentally sweating since he had and did without fear of being caught. I know you, Jiraiya. For years. Even if we haven't seen each other for over a decade, I know how you think. You care more about peeping on women than training a student to reach his full potential. You did it with your first and only Jin and team, you did it with Minato. And you did it again with Naruto, said Tsunade while Jiraiya scowled at her words. There was nothing wrong with my training of the fourth, Jiraiya shot back angrily. Oh no? I saw your training method once with Minato. You literally dumped all sorts of material into his lap, told him to study it, and left to peep on women at the hot springs for the next few hours. With each new thing he learned, you copied off of and played it off as if his ability to learn so well was thanks to your so-called teachings. You were and are a leech Jiraiya. Everything that Minato learned, you sucked up afterwards and made it appear to everyone who would remotely believe you that what he learned was taught by your perverted ass, said Tsunade while Jiraiya scowled. So, if it worked for Minato, it should have worked for his brat but he has none of the potential. Always making excuses about how his teachers at the academy sabotaged him, how Hataki didn't teach him anything, and how I spend more time peeping on women instead of training him, remarked Jiraiya before he went pale in the face and saw the angry look Tsunade was giving him. So you were neglecting his training. You did the same thing you did with Minato. You gave him complex things to learn and left Naruto to his own devices, accused Tsunade with Jiraiya scowling again. I wasn't going to hold his hand, Tsunade. All the brat needed to do was grow up and put effort into his training like Minato did, said Jiraiya while Tsunade shook her head. You really are blind, Jiraiya. You look at Naruto and see a miniature Minato. You expect another prodigy where you put in minimal effort into the training the student. Let them do all the work knowing they will advance at it and you reap the rewards. Have you no shame? Tsunade shot back. No. Don't you get it, Tsunade? Shame is for the weak. I have none. Why do you think I peep on women without fear of being beaten up by them? Why do I go to brothels? Why do I go on boasting that I am a super pervert? asked Jiraiya while Tsunade walked back to her desk and scowled further. Shame allows us to keep our morals, Jiraiya. While we are shinobi and ninja with blood on our hands, I would like to think we can hold on to something close to a personal and we do not cross, said Tsunade with Jiraiya waving her words off. You are starting to sound like the brat. It was bad enough he complained and spewed excuses for his inability to do half the material I placed in his lap, remarked Jiraiya with Tsunade narrowed her eyes at him. 
And what if I told you those so-called excuses were true? Asked Sonade before she brought out a massive folder containing Naruto's academic records. What is this? Asked Jiraiya curiously. Read. And see your failure for a student wasn't always a failure. He was actually very smart. Prodigy smart, said Tsunade while she saw Jiraiya reading some papers in front of him. This is when he first started the academy? Asked Jiraiya with Tsunade nodding. Yes. Naruto tried so hard to prove how smart he was at first to everyone. From the first few pages, you can tell Minato's brilliance was strong in him early on at the academy, said Tsunade while Jiraiya frowned. What happened? His grades show they are declining over the years, remarked Jiraiya while skimming through the papers. What do you think happened, you dumb shit? Beatings from the villagers when word got out he was actually smart. Blows to the head and the brain regenerating the way it did thanks to the biju in him caused his brain to shift in terms of thinking. Not to mention the teachers at the academy were sabotaging him. Placing him in spars with children who were told to go all out on him and beat him bloody. When the children didn't do that, it was the academy instructors. One of those bakas nearly took one of his eye out by an accidental throw of a shuriken during a practice session. Not to mention no one was around to teach Naruto anything proper. In short, this village poisoned the poor boy's brain and caused it to go from brilliant to stupid by the time he was ten years old. Had you been in Nagaki's life, you would know this and had a chance to stop it from ever happening, said Tsunade though she was just as guilty considering the brat was family on her grandmother's side. Why didn't Sensei correct this? asked Jiraiya with Tsunade sighing because he feared Naruto's brilliance. He feared Naruto becoming the next Orochimaru, or the next Itachi. The only real difference being Naruto possibly finding a way to actually use Kyuubi's Churka, but on Konoha for all the years of abuse this village put him through. So Sensei let it slide. He would rather have Naruto be a dumb Jinchuriki capable of fighting for the village over a smart one possibly going rogue and unleashing his well-deserved anger on Konoha, said Tsunade while Jiraiya sighed. It's no wonder he ran. My beating made things worse, said Jiraiya while Tsunade glared at him. You shouldn't have beaten him at all. I don't care what he said to you, Jiraiya. The fact is, you most likely deserved it. Honestly, throwing him into a ravine to force him to call on the fox's chakra? What possessed you to put him in an almost guaranteed death sentence like that, demanded Tsunade with Jiraiya's side again. I was frustrated, all right? At the time, I wanted him out of my hair. I only trained the brat because I thought he would fail and I could go back to my research. But he kept on pestering me and his summoning of the toads wasn't getting anywhere. So I figured that a life or death situation would be the perfect way for Naruto to unlock the Biju's power, said Jiraiya while Tsunade narrowed her eyes at him. And what if he died? What if he didn't unlock its power, Jiraiya? asked Tsunade with Jiraiya shrugging heartlessly. Then he died. It wouldn't have hurt anyone. The half Minato sealed into Naruto can't come back without the other half sealed in the Shinigami's belly while tied to my late student's soul. When the brat died from the fall, the fox would stay dead, and no one in the village would shed a tear. Everyone wins, said Jiraiya heartlessly. You are being quite cold to your student's only son, remarked Tsunade while Jiraiya waved off her words and ignored the growing killer intent coming off the woman. What? I'm supposed to go all happy in the face at the mention of Minato's son? I don't coddle kids, Tsunade. It doesn't matter who they are or where they come from. I only care about results. If Minato's brat can't produce them for whatever reasons, whether they are real or made up, then the kid can die in a ditch for all I care, provided the Akatsuki don't get to him first to extract the Kyuubi. Said Jiraiya while Tsunade finally lost it and threw a paperweight at him, which he barely dodged. 
Get out. Get out and don't come back, Jiraiya. Get out of Kanoha. Don't stop to peep on women. No stops at the red light district. Get the fuck out of the village. Right fucking now, exclaimed a very pissed off Tsunade and looked ready to throw her desk at him. And with her super strength, she damn well could. What? You're banishing me from Kanoha? asked Jiraiya while Tsunade stomped over to him. No. You are going on a mission. S ranked, but zero pays since you can afford to do it for free, said Tsunade with an evil look in her eyes. What? S ranked and zero pay, questioned Jiraiya with Tsunade nodding. Yes. You are going to find Naruto. You will find him, but you will not bring him back. No. Whatever he's doing, it's meant to get stronger. When you find him, I want you to get on your hands and knees, Jiraiya. Get on your hands and knees and beg for his forgiveness for your actions, said Tsunade with Jiraiya looking livid. What? Beg? Him? For forgiveness? Have you lost your mind? asked Jiraiya before Tsunade grabbed him by the throat and slammed him into the nearest wall. You will do this, Jiraiya. You have wronged him on multiple levels, both professionally and personally. Did you think I wouldn't keep track of your movements when I agreed to let Naruto travel with you? I had a slug summons watching your every move, every single action, every horrible thing you ever did when traveling. I know all about how you are spending Naruto's money on your vices. I know how you haven't been training him to fight off the Akatsuki like you said you would. And the training to use Kyuubi's chakra? It's bullshit. We both know the pair assigned to hunt Naruto from the Akatsuki were put together to nullify the use of the fox inside him. How do you expect Naruto to combat them without Kyuubi's chakra if you don't teach him anything else? Did you even try to think about such a possibility? said Tsunade with Jiraiya scoffing. Of course I did. I figured I would teach him how to use Kyuubi's chakra when traveling around and he learns just about everything else here in Kanoha, surmised Jiraiya like it was the easiest thing in the world. Except you didn't teach him how to use it properly, Jiraiya. You put his health at risk. His life at risk. And for what? So you could spend most of your days drinking and whoring while ignoring your student who is eager to learn. Do you know how many legends of the world would jump at the chance to have a student like that? And because of your actions, Naruto has gone off the reservation and off the map where anyone could find him, said Tsunade with Jiraiya looking away. The brat will come back. He will come crawling back to us soon enough begging me for forgiveness. Not the other way around. You'll see Tsunade, said Jiraiya while Tsunade looked skeptical. Did you try reverse summoning him with the toads? asked Tsunade finally. I went to them. They weren't exactly happy with me, remarked Jiraiya while his mind went to the memory of the toads all glaring at him. Flashback Mount Mayaboku two weeks after Naruto went missing. What do you mean you won't help me locate the brat? asked Jiraiya while he stared at Gamabanta, Pa, Ma, and the other toads in the room. And none of them looked happy. The fact he left without you noticing after all this time and not coming to us sooner only proves our decision was correct, said Fukasaku firmly. You were entrusted with the Gaki by Minato. Yet you spit on your duties to him and the boy. And for what? So you can write, you smut, questioned Shima angrily. Hey! What I do when it comes to my so-called responsibilities with my failure of a godson is my choice and mine alone. You have no right to judge me on this, protested Jiraiya with Gamabunta putting a giant webbed hand forward. Wrong! You had him sign our contract. He is part of our clan now. You cannot do anything that risks his health unless we deem it necessary. 
Your time with Naruto has left you wanting, declared Gamabunto with Jiraiya scowling at the giant toad. I see he told you everything before running away. Typical, muttered Jiraiya and was given a smack on the head with Fukusaku's staff. I don't know what got it in your head to be so cruel to the boy Jiraiya, but it ends now. We won't allow it. Naruto boy came to us. He told us everything you did on this little training trip of yours so far and we shuddered to think what the remaining time would have been like for him. As such, we decided to take him someplace safe so he can properly train and be ready to face the Uchiha and Orochimaru should it come down to it, said Fukusaku while Jiraiya looked at him in disbelief. You honestly believe that failure can take on the Uchiha? Much less Orochimaru? You have no idea how pathetic and weak Naruto is, do you? Questioned Jiraiya before he was hit in the head again, harder. Need we remind you, Jiraiya, that you were weak and pathetic failure once when under your own sensei's tutelage. Granted, you still are pathetic, but that's beside the point. The point is, the boy can do so much with the right teacher. He puts in more effort to get stronger than you ever did. It's why you never could perform the Sanin Moto to its fullest extent. We see great things with Naruto Boy just waiting to come out and it will never be allowed to come out if you are his sensei, said Fukusaku firmly while he saw the hurt in Jiraiya's eyes. You can train that brat until you are another color pod. He will never live up to the potential you see in him. Not with the remaining year and half left before he had to be back within Kanoha, countered Jiraiya while Fukusaku smirked. True. Your actions have caused us a considered roadblock to bringing out his true potential. But there are ways around it. Namely using that shadow clone jutsu the boy can use, said Paul while Jiraiya frowned in confusion. What about it? He can make copies of himself. Big deal. Just because he can make a couple hundred, if not a thousand of them doesn't make him anything special. They all dispel after one hit anyway, commented Jiraiya with Pa sighing before he hit Jiraiya yet again and several times following the initial hit. Are you that ignorant of the Shadow Clone Jutsu's true potential Jiraiya? Everything a single Shadow Clone knows, the original will remember from dispelling. The boy can make hundreds if not thousands of clones. You said so yourself. In a single day, the boy could learn and gain several weeks worth of training. In a month? Years. Years? Decades. By the time the boy comes back to Kanoha, correction, if he chooses to go back to Kanoha, Naruto will make that Uchiha, and your former teammate for a snake look like 90-pound weaklings soaking wet in pond scum. Said Pa while Jiraiya see that hearing this since he hated the idea of his student being taken from him and being trained to one day become even stronger than the Toad Sanin himself. That's not what the prophecy spoke of Pa. You know I'm supposed to train him. The Toad Elder said so, exclaimed Jiraiya while Pa scoffed and waved his hand dismissively at the prophecy. Jiraiya, the Elder Toad is getting on in his years. He smokes more and more opium every day to the point where his visions are absolute nonsense. Besides, we warned you not to take them seriously no matter how clear his visions of the future possible were to him. In addition, you were told not to tell anyone about the prophecy due to the rules in place to prevent mortals from interfering in the legitimate ones. Not that you listened to us since you told your damn sensei about it the moment your body landed in Kanova, said Fukusaku while Jiraiya looked away like a child getting caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah well, I wanted him to be proud of me. I was going to train the child of prophecy. Do you know how many women would have thrown themselves at me for such fame and glory? I would be up to my neck in hot babes all wanting a piece of me, even for just one night, said Jiraiya while Pa hit him repeatedly with his staff. Your lust for the female form and your sensei's approval is not an excuse. You were told to keep such information to yourself. But you didn't listen. 
and because of your actions, your sensei, and those within Kanoha have been trying to control the possible prophecy being altered in their favor, exclaimed Shima this time in an angrily tone. Would that really so bad? The prophecy working in our favor so Kanoha being on top, asked Jiraiya while seeing the toads glaring at him. Yes, yelled all the toads at once that it shipped the very mountain. Fine. You want the brat? Take him. Train him in some remote area on the mountain or some other part of the world for all I care. It doesn't matter. He's a failure. He was born a failure too. The only thing that makes him special is the fox in his gut and the brat can't even get the beast to submit. To think he's Minato blood, mocked Jiraiya before he left. We're sorry you had to hear that Naruto-chan. It must have been hard to hear, said Shima while looking behind Gamabunta's right back leg to see an emotionally conflicted Naruto behind it. It was hard to hear. Considering I didn't know he was my godfather or that the fourth was my father until now, commented Naruto while his eyes became increasingly furious at the replaying of Jiraiya's words in his mind. Don't let the idiot get to you, Naruto boy. He was a failure for most of his life. The fact Jiraiya had a descent education, sensei, and wasn't a Jinchuriki speaks volumes unto itself. You have been hindered all your life, Naruto boy. But no more. We want you to train here, with us, without interference, and become every bit the shinobi you were meant to be in life. What do you say, Naruto boy? Interested in being every bit the powerhouse your father was in life, said Fukasaku with Naruto smirking now. No Fukasaku-sama. I'm interested in being every bit the powerhouse my father was in life and more, said Naruto with determination while Fukasaku smirked. That's the spirit, Naruto boy. By the time we get done training you, Uchihamadara himself will seem like a fly to be eaten in comparison, declared Fukasaku with a grin. Good. Because that's what I want so when the time comes, I can shove my fist filled with crow down Kanoha's throats. Teach me, exclaimed Naruto with his eyes blazing with a fire the toads had only seen in Minato after they met the young man. End flashback. Lousy ungrateful fly eating wartmakers grumbled Jiraiya while Tsunade narrowed her eyes at him. Bitch about it later Jiraiya. I need you to refocus your spy network focusing on both the Akatsuki and Orochimaru since they are a threat to Kanoha, said Tsunade while Jiraiya grimaced. What about my mission to find Naruto and beg his forgiveness, asked Jiraiya while he saw Tsunade scowl at him. That can wait until later. Naruto is clearly getting his training from the toads, but at a location neither of us can go. Besides, the Gaki will more than likely come back to the village when the time is right. You can beg for his forgiveness when that happens, said Tsunade with Jiraiya frowning at the idea of groveling to his student. And if I say no, asked Jiraiya with a hint of defiance in his voice. Only for Tsunade to appear in front of him, grabbed the Sanin by the throat, and squeezed to the point where she risked crushing it. If you don't do this, I will rip your testicles from your body and mount them on the wall behind my desk, right between the pictures of Sensei and the fourth. Got it, threatened Tsunade with Jiraiya grinning sheepishly at her. Well, when you put it like that, how can I say no? asked Jiraiya while gasping for air. You can't. Now get out of my office. I don't want to see you back here until you have some results, said replied Tsunade before she threw him out of the open window. Jiraiya-sama isn't the only one who should beg Naruto for forgiveness, Tsunade-sama, said Shizun while Tsunade frowned. I don't need a lecture from you, Shizun, said Tsunade before sitting down in her chair with a huff. Considering you don't listen to me regardless, it's not surprising, commented Shizun with a scowl. What do you want me to say, Shizun? Or do for that matter. Find Naruto and say, hey, Gaki. Guess what? You and I are distant cousins. We're family. 
I knew this whole time, but left you to suffer in Kanoha alone. Forgive me, after all this time? What would you do in his place? asked Tsunade with Shizun thinking it over. Well, if I were Naruto, I would probably punch you in the face simply in the belief you deserved it. Followed by pranking the entire village as a whole. As a result, tripling your already large pile of paperwork to the point where you throw a temper tantrum and throw your desk out the window, answered Shizum while Tsunade sweat dropped. Naruto wouldn't do that, would he? asked Tsunade with Shizum just smiling at her. Considering his pranking history? You tell me, said Shizum while Tsunade was now crying anime tears. When Naruto made his way to Suna, he was not in the best of moods considering his return to Kanoha generated a lot of negative emotions from past memories. He had come back to Kanoha with his mind clearer, more focused, and a better perspective on life. The Toads had taught him everything they had to offer about Chakra, including Senjutsu, their fighting style to the point where it was flawless in performing the Katas without error. There was only one thing Naruto truly needed that he currently lacking right now in life to make things perfect. Life experience. So when word reached Kanova of Suna's Kazakage Sabaka no Gara had been kidnapped by the Akatsuki, it was only natural that Naruto go to help his friend. A team consisting of Kakashi, Yamato, Tamari, Sakura, Sai and himself had departed to Suna in the hopes they would stop whatever the Akatsuki had planned. And naturally, they ran into resistance in any form of the Akatsuki. After the group left Suna to find Gara, the opposition came in the form of two of its members. In the form of Itachi and Kisame. Not that Naruto let them stop him from reaching his goals. So if it isn't Sushi Bitch and the Silent Asshole, Killed any other clans lately? Have you spilled the blood of innocent puppies? Asked Naruto in a mocking tone. Look at him, Itachi. Three years away with the Sanin and the brat thinks he is hot shit, remarked Kisame while Itachi said nothing. Year and a half. I parted ways with that perverted fool when it became clear his way of teaching wasn't teaching at all. Honestly, Teaching me to tap into Kyuubi's chakra in order to fight you two better was not one of his better ideas. It's like someone fighting a house fire with toad oil. It doesn't work and makes things worse. So I spent my remaining time training under the toads themselves, said Naruto while Kisame kept on grinning while Itachi's eyes narrowed slightly. So you spent your time with some talking web ward makers. Big fucking deal. It still won't help you against us, said Kisame while Naruto grinned viciously. If I'm not such a big threat to you, why is Itachi still trying to cast me in a Jinjutsu with his eyes like he has with everyone else, asked Naruto while Itachi's eyes narrowed even more. So you found a way to make yourself immune to Jinjutsu. Interesting, said Itachi while Naruto suddenly scowled. You can stop with the praise Itachi. I know why you two but buddies are here and it's not to insult us or speak small praises at what I do. I also sense you two aren't the real deal. You hide it well, even showing the various abilities one would find in both the real Itachi and Kisame. But Uzumaki's sensory perception can see through that weak shit and right now I see two corpses being used as puppets to hold us off while my friend is being killed. So drop the jutsu and stand aside, said Naruto while Kisame grinned. Or else what brat, demanded Kisame before he was suddenly and violently kicked in the midsection by Naruto sending the man flying back well over 200 feet. Fast. And strong, thought Itachi while glancing over at Kisame, who had reverted back to the dead body they obtained for this jutsu. Fun fact about Senjutsu. It can really hurt people when you strike them in a vital bodily area, said Naruto before he glared at Itachi. I am curious, how are you blocking my Sharingan's power, asked Itachi curiously. Simple. 
I'm mixing Sinjutsu and the QB's power through my body in perfect sync. When heading here, I spent that time gathering up as much of it as I could. Mix it just right with what is sealed in my gut and no Jinjutsu you have from your shitty eyes can stand in my way. Not even the second level you have in your back pocket, said Naruto with Itachi frowning further. So you know, remarked Itachi with Naruto scoffing. Of course I do. Sasuke basically bragged as much on how an Uchiha gets one of your cursed eyes to that stage. I got further information from the toads on how it works. It's a good thing I don't consider your brother my best friend or else the bastard might get what he wanted. Aside from killing you of course, said Naruto while Itachi frowned further at him. You should reconsider. You could learn a lot from him and forming a bond would be for the best, said Itachi while Naruto snarled. Been there. Done that. What did I get for my efforts? Insults, a broken neck, and two Chidoras to the chest. I think I'll pass on the whole friends with the Uchiha concept. It's not healthy, said Naruto while Itachi frowned at him since he needed the two of them to be friends so Sasuke could get the eyes needed to become stronger. Naruto's resistance to reforming the bond of friendship with Sasuke was hindering the plans of the Uchiha clan slayer and Itachi didn't like it. He wanted Sasuke to gain the next level of the Sharingan so when both Uchiha fought next, Itachi could give his eyes to Sasuke and become an Uchiha worthy of ruling over their rebuilt clan. But Naruto was being difficult and it seemed Sasuke himself had been responsible for causing the damage. The QB Jinchuriki's time with the Toads had clearly made the boy stronger. Stronger than anyone would most likely prefer him to be in life. Not only that, but the Toads had provided a mentality of where the boy no longer took crap from anyone and was not as forgiving to someone who hurt him. Again, it created a problem for Itachi. One he now had to fix in the future, but do it in a discreet manner away from the Akatsuki. A pity. No matter. You are only a mean to an end, said Itachi while Naruto smirked at him now. So are you, said Naruto before he moved faster than even the fake Itachi's eyes could follow and was struck across the face where the eyes were located with the blonde's chakra. And leave large scar on the face of Itachi with enough chakra behind the strike to tear flesh from its body. And damaging the eyes of the fake body the Uchiha possessed. A raising gan to the fake Uchiha's chest and he was down for the count before Naruto used his chakra again to dispel the Jinjutsu his team was in. Before they could ask what had happened upon seeing the two unknown bodies around them, Naruto was already heading for where he sensed Gara's fading life force was located. A raising gan to the barrier setup to keep them out did the trick and Naruto entered to see Shikaku being extracted from Gara. Before the two Akatsuki members sent to retrieve the young Kage could speak, Naruto did something that would shock them, the Kanova team, and the other projected members of the Akatsuki in the room. Naruto took out tri-pronged kunai before throwing them at Deidara and Sasori. Oh, said Deidara with a start since being a former IWA Nin made him recognize what just happened. Shit. Finished Sasori before Naruto appeared in a flash, striking with another kunai to Daidara's skull and a Senjutsu-enhanced kick to Sasori's side. Sasori's puppet body shattered into a hundred pieces, but the puppet within the puppet had escaped, if just barely. But before he could do anything, Naruto was in his personal space, putting his fist into Sasori's puppet chest where the blonde sensed was where the remaining anchor of life binding the puppet master was placed. Any last words before you die, growled Naruto angrily. I do. I know Orochimaru is your enemy. He is mine too. I have a spy within his ranks at nearly the highest level. I was meant to meet up with him in the next two weeks to obtain the Sanin's future movements. I now give you this chance to kill him in my place, said Sasori while Naruto narrowed his eyes at him. 
Location, said Naruto while Sasori whispered it into his ear before Naruto crushed his heart within the puppet body before turning to the still shocked members of the Akatsuki staring back at him. The Kyubi Jinchuriki We meet at last, remarked Payne from his projection after a long moment of silence while still trying to process the fact the boy used the Yandame's most feared jutsu. He would have to talk to Tobi and Zetsu about that in private. And you must be the leader of these assholes, what does that make you? Biggest asshole of them all, remarked Naruto while Payne ignored the insult. What? Call me an asshole with you? You are so fucking lucky I'm not there right now, kid. I could kill you easily and sacrifice you to Jashin himself, said Hayden through the projection. Am I talking to you? No? Then shut your mouth and suck rope, said Naruto while the man he insult went on a cursing rant and spewed out more threats while the one next to him let out a chuckle. All of which Naruto ignored when he went to get a barely alive Gara. Fortunately, they had gotten there to the point where Shikaku wasn't extracted fully from Gara and went right back in the redhead's body. Acting quickly, Naruto altered the poor excuse for a seal to make it stronger, but also placing some various security measures into it to help prevent a future forced extraction like this one. Once done, Naruto glanced over at the projection still there watching him, and growled at Pain currently staring back at him with narrowed Rinnegan eyes. You are only delaying the inevitable. You and every other Jinchuriki will soon be an extension of my will and bring about a new era of peace through pain, said Pain while Naruto glanced at him before turning to another projection farther back from the rest of the members. I'm going to enjoy ripping out your spinal column. I suggest you all get ready for the fight I am going to bring to your doorstep. Because I am not going to hold back and I am going to show you why it is unwise to piss off Uzumaki Naruto, said Naruto to all of them before he picked up his friend and left without another word to them while ignoring his teammates. After what he just did, it was clear to them that the Naruto they knew, or thought they knew was no more. This Naruto was geared up for a fight and had no problems with dishing out the beating to those who deserved it. Orochimaru's lair sometime later. So, where is the loser? I see a pink-haired wannabe for a kunoichi. I see my lazy pervert for a sensei, an unknown and clearly weak shinobi, but not the loser, commented Sasuke arrogantly while he stared down at his former teammate and sensei. Maybe he doesn't think you're worth the effort, commented Kakashi while Yamato was looking around for the Sanin. The last few hours, if not the past couple of weeks, had been interesting to say the least for them. Or it had been for Kakashi himself when Naruto came back to the village with a whole new feel about him. When Naruto had finally come back to Kanova, he had changed quite a bit. No longer loud-mouthy, boasting, and overall weak like he had been when leaving with Jiraiya. He was calm, serious, and had an aura about him like a storm of sorts was brewing all around his very being. When Kakashi tried to greet him, Naruto just gave him the most serious of looks that made the cycloptic jounin freeze instantly since it reminded him deeply of his late sensei when serious. It was in that moment, Kakashi knew Naruto he remembered was no more. Gone was the ramen addict, hyperactive blonde, and his yell of being Hokage one day for all to hear. In his place was someone ready for a fight and would gladly dish it out if push came to a possible shove. When Naruto entered the Hokage's office, Tsunade had wanted to hug Naruto, which was what almost happened if not for the blonde man giving her that same moment look given to Kakashi. He was not back in the village for hugs, kisses, well wishes, or anything else resembling friendship one had among other shinobi in the same village. He was here on business. He was back in Kanoha to clear away some of his own debts and make others pay theirs to him. Namely to clear up past failures. One involving Sasuke, Kabuto, Orochimaru, and even the Akatsuki itself. 
He also made it clear that any such abuse aimed at him in the past and into the future would be met with retribution by people who thought they could get away with it. While Naruto wasn't going to kill anyone, as far as Kakashi and Tsunade knew, the blonde Uzumaki made it clear that people would wish they had died should they test him. He also made it clear that the Toads had helped fix whatever broken mentality or false perception he had regarding his views of Kanoha and life in general. They made it clear that forgiveness was good to give out, but not when it was taken for granted. Not only that, but if they acted smug about it, not only was said forgiveness wasted, the act itself only made the offenders believe they were in the right. Since they were never punished or ignored when the acts of abuse occurred, the people got it in their heads that the cruel actions they performed on Naruto was okay. Even more so when no one called them out on being proven wrong about Naruto in the first place. If no one did that, why feel any remorse at all? Why feel anything bad about abusing the Jinchuriki if no one was going to remind them how the boy didn't do anything to deserve it? The fools could easily argue their abuse kept the boy in check. That they had every right to hurt the boy and would do it again if possible for the same result since no one had punished them from the beginning. For Naruto, such lines of thought were unacceptable. Actions have consequences and the actions of Kanoha on his person were unacceptable. The fact the powers that be did not punish them for their actions and tried to let them see the light on their own was foolish since the group mentality would never let a single individual within think otherwise. In Naruto's mind, in order to fix this, you had to break the group mentality and target the individual fragments of the group mentality before they could reform elsewhere. Make them see that their point of view was not only stupid, but would not go unpunished. In his mind, if they didn't get punished for their past actions, it would only just encourage future generations to be abusive to any Jinchuriki following him. And Naruto wasn't going to stand for it one way or the other. When Tsunade tried to talk to him about more personal things, Naruto told her they could wait and to give him the key to his parents' home. The one he should have had from the start, but was denied by the powers that be when younger thanks to the Sandame and the Power Hungry Council. It was clear to those select people in the room, who already knew Naruto's parents that he also knew the truth, and was not happy with anyone who not only knew the truth, but chose not to do anything to help him. The Toads had been most supportive of him and providing Naruto with the knowledge he needed to know that was kept from him most of his life. They fixed the warped mental view Kanoha, the Sandame, and Jiraiya had given during his time living there. Naturally, they were appalled by some of things the village had done to the boy mentally, as well as the physical aspect of the abuse. It had taken a lot of effort to undo the damage, but the shadow clone Jetsu producing thousands of copies each day to focus on ninja training while the real one had his mentality healed was a great counter. The Toads also suspected the Shadow Clone Jetsu was kept from Naruto from the start, even though it was designed for an Uzumaki with high chakra reserves in the first place. It was also concerning that the Sandame and Academy instructors had known the boy had such high reserves, yet offered no alternative to the standard Clone Jetsu. Hell, the Academy led Rock Lee graduate from the Academy and the spandex wearing boy had practically an O chakra to begin with. It raised a shitload of questions and speculative answers were all that followed. Again, the Toads suspected foul play. Even more so when all the instructors told Naruto to try harder and pay more attention in class despite the fact teachers kicked him out whether Naruto didn't anything to warrant it or not. They didn't tell him anything about chakra control or any other versions of the clone jutsu he could use, much less those that were elemental like the earth or water clone jutsus. Foul play only smelled more likely and more foul the longer the toads thought about it and made a mental note to speak to Jiraiya about this in the off chance the fool knew or considered this outcome. Still, Tsunade wanted to test his skills in an evaluation. When Naruto asked who would perform the test, the boy unleashed a small, pulse of killer intent throughout the room. 
It made Tsunade, Shizun, Kakashi, and the hidden ANBU watching everything shiver in fear. When it came to the evaluation, it was no longer any real surprise to Kakashi that Naruto had grown up so much since the last time he saw him. Hell, Naruto didn't even need the help of Sakura or the superhuman strength technique Tsunade taught her. The fact that he ignored her the entire time upon his return notwithstanding. Of course, Sakura would yell at him in order for the blonde to pay attention to her, but again, Naruto ignored her to focus on the test at hand. Which was naturally, the fucking bell test. Something which Naruto recalled ended in the unfair treatment of himself being tied to the post at the end. Honestly, Sakura went down from a genjutsu, and again after seeing Sasuke's head sticking up from the ground. She didn't even try to get the damn bell. So what if he tried to eat the food? Kakashi had also been a prick the entire time and was late both times they first met him. As if it was okay for him to waste their time when they could have done things instead of waiting. How Kakashi justified his decisions to punish Naruto among other things he did when Team 7 was formed, the blonde didn't know. Nor did he care for that matter. Kakashi had wronged him back when they first started out and Naruto intended for the man to pay up with this test. Fortunately, Kakashi had basically ordered him and Sakura to attack the Jounin with the intent to kill. Which was why, for his part, Naruto quickly beat Kakashi bloody all on his own within a matter of moments, took the single bell the Jounin had, gave it to a stunned Sakura, and simply left the training field without saying a word only for Jiraiya to appear in front of him with a disapproving frown on his face. You've changed Gaki. But not for the better. As if you have a right to judge me. After all the shit you pulled. So you're holding a grudge, is that it? It's not my fault you can't take a few hits physically or otherwise. We both know this goes well beyond a few hits you fucking waste of space. So I wasn't there for you growing up. Do you think you're the only one with a godparent or a parent out there who ignore their obligations? Grow up. I didn't hold your hand back when you were a pathetic gaki, and I won't do it now. Also, I have no intention of getting on my knees and begging for your forgiveness regardless of what Tsunade commands. I don't expect you to hold my hand or beg for my forgiveness. I'm too old for one of them and the other I have none to give. Even if I did wish to forgive you Jiraiya, we both know it would an emotional response wasted on a man who cares more about boobs and butts over his own surrogate family. Is it any wonder the old fart monkey liked Orochimaru far more when it came to teaching the two of you? Watch it brat. The Sandame was my sensei and a great man. You may think yourself hot shit now, but I've got a lot more experience and can still kick your ass. You would think that. But we both know your skills are mediocre at best. When was the last time you trained Jiraiya? And I mean actually trained in the toad katas you were told required to be constantly practiced? When was the last time you had an actual fight with someone? The answer is simple. It's been a very long time. If I went all out right now against you at your best, I could wipe the floor with you and still have enough energy left to go on a mission without slowing down. Tough talk for a brat not even 16 years old yet. It's not talk. I can back it up right here. Right now. The only reason I don't is because I am heading to see Hokage for a mission. Excuses. Excuses. Just like before a year and a half ago. If you really were stronger, you would fight me right now. I will fight you. Right after I kill Orochimaru and bring Sasuke back a broken man. You can't kill him, Naruto. Orochimaru's too strong. Not to mention Sasuke will decimate you if there is a confrontation. The kid's a prodigy. You're not. Tell you what arrow sent in. 
After I return from killing your former teammate and bringing back mine, I will fight you. One on one. No holding back. You fight me with everything you've got and I'll bring everything I have to the battle too. Agreed? Done. I just hope you're ready to admit how outclassed you are against the man of my skills, Gaki. And I hope you understand just how stupid you were to neglect me all those years ago after I leave your body broken on the ground. And just so you know, if I see a moment in time where I can kill you, I am taking it. This isn't going to be a simple spar, Jiraiya. This is going to be an all-out war and I intend to not only win, but see to it you are never the same again as a result. Oh, and one more thing. Your so-called sensei wasn't the god of shinobi. He was the god of hypocrisy. The Sandame Hokage was a double standard fool and out of everything he taught you, it was the only skill that the man successfully passed down onto you. I'm warning you, Brett. Say one more bad word about my sensei and I will kill you right here on the spot. You tried that already, remember? Throwing me into that endless ravine in the hopes of activating the QB's chakra. By the way, the toads think you are an idiot for thinking up such a stupid idea. It was the fastest way to do it. And if you failed, it was no big deal in my book. As your godfather, I was entitled to see how you were raised as my godson and trained in being a shinobi. Does that include how I should die as one or the other? Q long silence. Did the toads tell you about the prophecy? All of it? Yeah. They did. It's total crap you know. I heard it word for word. Why the elder toad told you said prophecy is beyond me. You were not meant to hear it. Much less blab it to the Sandam. You do know there are rules in place made by Kami regarding prophecies, right? Though I'm not surprised. You were so obsessed with the part focusing on yourself, itself I would be surprised if you actually cared about who you would be training. Fuck those rules. Fuck Kami. You think I care about such things? Where was Kami and his rules when Madara betrayed Kanoha? When Orochimaru betrayed Kanoha? When the fourth Hokage died? When my sensei died? When I lost everything that mattered to me? If Kami wasn't going to play by the rule he set, I didn't have to either. Spare me your so-called suffering. You were always a lazy super pervert and leech long before you became a shinobi. Long before those so-called bad things happened to you in life. You leeched off my father and anyone else you could get your claws into for your own benefit. The only reason you didn't dig even deeper into the fourth was because my mother saw you for the wretched thing you were and put a stop to it. Which is exactly why I'm glad she isn't alive here today. Your bitch of a mother had no business getting between me and my former student. If I wanted to mooch off him, it was my right. She didn't have any right to interfere with how I was interacting with my former student. Even though she was married to him? My mother wasn't exactly pleased with you when she overheard a conversation to convince my father that it was okay to have piece of Kunoichi ass on the side so if my mother got too bitchy, he could always go to another woman for comfort. Not to mention, you told my father how the people of Kanoha did not really care for my mother that much because she was considered a foreigner and having a Kunoichi from Kanoha on the side as a secondary option was more tolerable. How do you know about that? Both of my parents each left a piece of their souls in the seal as a failsafe of sorts should it falter from stress and strain. They were very angry with you and Kanoha as a whole when I told them about my life. They see your actions as a betrayal of their trust in being a responsible godparent. When you die, they will be in having words with you on the subject. Kakashi still shivered at the memory. Especially the last part. The Jounin knew Kushina was a woman you did not cross. Ever. 
Even Orochimaru, for all his sadistic tendencies, knew pissing the woman off was worse than an angry Tsunade catching Jiraiya peeping on her. It seems that the loser has become even more stupid since the last time I saw him, said Sasuke arrogantly before he suddenly gasped in pain and grabbed his neck when feeling an intense burning sensation. Or maybe Kakashi is right. I don't see you as a threat or challenge to me anymore, said Naruto behind Sasuke moments later with the Uchiha's eyes widening. How did he get behind me without sensing him? thought Sasuke before he turned around and attempted to cut the blonde in half with his sword. Or for said Naruto in front of him to explode and sent him flying back down towards the Kanoha team below. Or rather that would have happened if not for Naruto coming at him from the right, kneeing him in the rib. This was followed up by one to the left punching Sasuke in the face. Finished off with one surprising the Kanoha team by shooting right up from the ground in the lab into the air and delivering a chakra enhanced kick to the Uchiha spine. After this happened, an army of Naruto shadow clones made themselves into a whip and launched the Naruto at the end to hit Sasuke in the chest to send the still shocked Uchiha back down. Not such hot shit now, are you Uchiha? Did Orochimaru spend his time training you to be a proper shinobi? Or as his personal sex pet, asked Naruto coldly toward his former teammate struggling to stand from the hits he suffered. How, how can you, be this strong, asked Sasuke while looking up at Naruto with disdain in his eyes. Through training. Lots and lots of training. Training day and night. I bloodied my hands, my feet and even my face to the point where the crimson liquid acted as a second skin. I broke my bones in so many places it's not even funny. What I did to you was not even a fraction of what I can do to you, Sasuke. The force behind each blow I landed had enough power behind it to rival one of Tsunade's super strength punches. Right now, I believe you have several broken ribs, a badly bruised if not broken spine, and jaw shattered on one side with a few teeth being loose, if not falling out, said Naruto calmly while he raised a hand to stop Sakura from moving to heal the Uchiha. I should have killed you at the Valley of the End. To think I spared you on a whim, said Sasuke while Naruto had the nerve to laugh at him. At him. An Uchiha. An elite. You spared me on a whim? Once again, Sasuke, you copy others before doing anything truly original. I spared you first. I could have ripped right through your Chidori with my Raisin Gan or let my attack rip your face clean off while taking those eyes Orochimaru wanted so badly right out of their sockets. But I held back. I held a lot back. Orders were to use force if you resisted were authorized but it wasn't lethal force. You, however, had no such restraint and came at me with the intent to kill. You threw everything you had at me and I came back for more. Your victory over me, Uchiha, was a technicality. Nothing more, stated Naruto while Sasuke was seething and tried to use his curse mark. Only to find he couldn't. My power. The curse seal. I can't, I can't use it, stated Sasuke in shock while he had assumed Naruto had put some kind of suppressor on him. You're just realizing that now? I killed Orochimaru and as a result the cursed seal on you was destroyed before I even made my presence known to your soulless ass. Honestly, you are so arrogant and smug about yourself that you don't have any sensory awareness for having eyes in the back of your head. Your belief that no one would even dare attack the mighty Uchiha Sasuke from behind is so strong that your awareness a shinobi should have for such things completely sucks, said Naruto while Sasuke seethed further. Impossible. There is no way you are near Orochimaru's level. Or Kabuto's, exclaimed Sasuke before he winced in pain from trying to push himself and was having a hard time breathing. I train to the point of exhaustion each day Sasuke. With my stamina and chakra, I can train all day into the night. 
It got to the point where Pa and Ma Toad threatened to halt my training if I didn't get any sleep at night. One point, I was training so hard they caught me sleep training and had to watch me until they could figure out how to stop it, said Naruto while Sasuke snarled at him. You used the QB for your training, didn't you? Orochimaru already told me all about it. Your dirty little secret. You used its power like a crutch to get stronger. Without it, you are nothing, exclaimed Sasuke with Naruto scoffing. As if you are one to talk. Who used Curse Seal Stage 2 on me at the valley at the end? Who has the Sharingan? You want to talk about crutches in order to get stronger? Yours is practically in your blood. You copied Lee's Taijutsu for the Chunin exams rather than learn how to do it the old-fashioned way of learning it yourself because you can't do it the old-fashioned way. And what did it get you? All those fancy moves required having a lot of stamina. You may have copied the forms of his Taijutsu during the month spent training, but you lack the meat behind it. I didn't make that mistake. I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mado Guy, Rock Lee, and Kakashi here at the same time all day while barely breaking a sweat. I imagine that's not the case with you, Sasuke. I imagine you can barely stand if you were to spar with Orochimaru or Kabuto while going all out, said Naruto while Sasuke spat blood out of his mouth. Fuck you, said Sasuke while Naruto smirked. No thanks, Sasuke. I'm straight. Unlike you, I don't run away from beautiful women to be with a creepy snake pedophile and is equally creepy but buddy. When we get back to Kanoha, you are going answer for your crimes. You will answer for everything, traitor, said Naruto before he kicked Sasuke right in the face with enough force to knock him out. Was that really necessary? asked Sakura while Naruto glanced at her coldly. If you had paid attention to half the things Tsunade should have taught you Sakura, you would know the body language Sasuke was giving off before my arrival clearly showed he was going to kill you all. He would have swooped down, killed you all, and not lost an ounce of sleep over it. Hell, I imagine he would paraded your bodies all over the place for anyone to see in the hopes of pissing me off. Still think it was too much, said Naruto before he put chakra suppression cuffs on the Uchiha before sealing Sasuke into his one-of-a-kind prisoner scroll created so prisoners could be easily transported back home if caught alive. You don't have to be so cold, Naruto, said Sakura with a frown since she was finally having a conversation with him, but was barely considered civil. Well, when you have two assassination jutsus rammed into your chest and have your neck broken by a ravine high pile driver, you can judge whether or not the user of such moves deserves to be treated with kid gloves, said commented Naruto before walking away and ignoring the shocked look from his former teammate. Naruto couldn't wait to show them off and rub it in everyone's faces what he had made when allowing his mind to think of new things to create. Hokage's office sometime later. If I wasn't looking at the proof before my very eyes, I would have thought all of you were meant for an insane asylum, said Tsunade after Naruto took out two scrolls and unsealed one. The one holding the heads of Orochimaru and Kabuto. The one head was arguably that of a giant white snake, it was definitely Tsunade's and Jiraiya's old teammate. Seeing is believing Tsunade, said Naruto professionally while deciding to no longer call her granny like he used to do. Not out of respect. No. She didn't have his respect. Not anymore. Not her. Not Jiraiya. Not the late Sandame. Not Kakashi. None of them did. Especially the adults. They all knew the truth. You have to be pretty fucking blind, deaf, and dumb not to know the truth of who was the boy's father. Naruto was especially angry at the Inazuka clan since he knew they should have been able to tell right away thanks to their sense of smell being enhanced. I mean, all they had to do was smell his scent and compare it to the memory of his late parents. As for Tsunade, 
She had a look of sorrow in her eyes at not being called Granny since it was his own weird way to show some measure of respect. While the nickname was in a way a shot at her growing age, it was not meant to be an insult, at least not anymore, and was missing it in some strange way. How did you kill him? asked Tsunade curiously. Simple. I pissed him and Kabuto off. I had them make the first move. Wasn't hard. Just had to provoke the one weakness Orochimaru and Kabuto had left, said Naruto like it was the easiest thing in the world. What weakness was that? asked Tsunade curiously with the others listening intently. Easy. It was their pride. I attacked and insulted their pride. I insulted the intelligence of Orochimaru first. His so-called ability to cheat death and mocked him for fearing it. I called him a lowly parasitic worm who wets himself in the presence of the Shinigami. I also needed to make sure Kabuto didn't try to cool his head so I proceeded to insult him next. I did this by mocking Kabuto for being so loyal to Orochimaru. I also called him Orochimaru's personal but buddy and liked to have the Senen's extended tongue and cock slithering up his ass because he didn't have any other purpose in life when it came to serving the Senen. Naturally, the two didn't take my insults very well and the fact that their pride was being attacked by someone they considered weak was something they couldn't tolerate, said Naruto while there was simply more to it than just insulting the two missing Nin. For one, Naruto didn't waste time being flashy with them. He was quick and precise in killing them both. Kabuto died first. Cutting the man's chakra scalpel covered arm off at the elbow, followed by the head with standard ANBU sword he had, acquired from the traitorous, and emotionally stunted Sai had done the job. Naruto had killed Sai because he knew something was off about the pale-skinned and emotionally challenged boy. Pa and Ma had taught him well in determining when a person was not who they truly were no matter how hard they tried to hide it. Sensory awareness kicked ass. As such, Naruto had interrogated Sai to the point where the boy was a bloody mess. A silent mess, but bloody all the same. It was after Naruto went through Sai's ninja gear did he see the pictures of ANBU without their masks, lists of their names identifying them, and even some of their abilities. All assigned to be given to Orochimaru from the looks of things and a message from one Shimura Danzo of Kanoha asking for the two of them to work in taking Tsunade out. The pictures with the identities of the ANBU being a sign of good faith payment to Orochimaru and the promise of test subjects if the Sanin helped him become the next Tokage. All in all, Naruto kept such evidence for later, and killed Sai with his own sword before the root Nin could even contemplate what happened. The other members of the team didn't know this since they had gone on ahead to scout for Orochimaru's base. When they asked about Sai on the way back to Kanoha, he found it was incredibly easy to just lie to them about how Kabuto killed Sai with the chakra scalpel to the chest. Considering it was how Naruto almost died at one point, it wasn't too hard to believe the story was true since the blonde used his own experience as a reference in the story. This way, the group would believe the story and make the lie more believable when giving his report. The look of remembrance on Tsunade's face would be seen by Kakashi, Yamato, and Sakura so they wouldn't have any reasons to doubt it. Add the body was dumped off the bridge into the river below during the fighting would make it impossible for them to find Sai's corpse, which was actually burned into ashes so there was no chance in hell of finding it. As for Orochimaru, he was pissed off that Kabuto was killed so easily and quickly by Naruto to the point of instantly going all out on the Kyubi Jinchuriki. Naruto did the same with the area around them being turned into completely different terrain. When Naruto went to Four Tails, the Sanin had tried to use his sword on him in the hopes the poison and it would end the blonde's life. Only for Naruto to surprise him by grabbing the sword when extended at the last minute, yanked the Sanin forward, and sliced him in half with his claws. Orochimaru was able to recover by reattaching both halves together, 
but no sooner did he do that, Naruto was on his back, sinking both claws and teeth into the Sanin's body. Sending corrosive, flesh dissolving, Biju Chakra into the man, who barely shook the Jinchuriki off of him before shedding his skin like body to save his life. Only to be met with a Biju bomb, which he tried to shield himself with using the triple Rashomon Jutsu. It almost didn't work, but the blast was stopped. As for Naruto, he was on the Sanin again before he could quickly recover and began weakening Orochimaru considerably. Until finally, Orochimaru had no choice but to change into his giant white snake form to combat Naruto in his four-tailed state. The battle soon became one of pure skill, agility, wits, and just the right timing mixed in with some raw animalistic fury from both sides. With the one instance where Naruto grabbed the discarded and forgotten sword during the battle, Kusanagi near him and sliced the Sanin's head clean off his body. Shortly after, Naruto stabbed the head into the brain for good measure, a couple dozen times to be exact, and burned the large white carcass looking to be made up of multiple tiny snakes to ensure there was no way the Sanin could continue to live. One sealed up snake head later, the blonde was off to deal with Sasuke's traitorous ass. I find that hard to believe, Naruto. You're strong. Unbelievably strong. But to take down someone like Orochimaru, much less Kabuto together is difficult to accept, said Tsunade skeptically. And yet here we are with the proof sitting on your desk. Oh, one more thing before I forget, said Naruto before he took out a scroll and unsealed it to reveal Sasuke's battered form now in front of the woman's desk. A kick to the Uchiha's ribs by Naruto and the groan that followed from the beaten body on the groan proved he was still alive. Umbu. Take the traitor away. No one is allowed to see him except Ibiki, Anko, and myself until I say otherwise. If anyone else tries to see Uchiha Sasuke, I want you to arrest them, commanded Tsunade with the ANBU nodding and left the room with the Uchiha being carried off. When can I get my pay? asked Naruto with Tsunade sighing since she missed the loud mouth brat who would smile and shout about being Hokage. She still believed he would be Hokage, but would not have that same caring smile. Now he was all seriousness. What did he learn during his time away from Kanoha and Jiraiya? Did they, her sensei, and Tsunade herself scar him that badly? Here is the pay stub for both the completed mission, the bounty for killing Orochimaru and Kabuto, and the retrieval of Uchiha Sasuke. Present that to the bounty pay room and they'll give you the money you deserve, said Tsunade with Naruto took them, but did not smile at her. Unlikely. If they are the same idiots who were there three years ago, they still owe me back pay for not providing the appropriate amount of cash from my previous missions when the Sandame was alive. This includes the bounty for the two Akatsuki members I killed back Suna when rescuing Gara, said Naruto while Tsunade frowned since she didn't know that. Did you tell my sensei about this when he was alive? asked Tsunade curiously while also making a mental note to pay that section a visit. I did. The Sandame said he would look into it. I waited two weeks for him to fix the problem. He never did. I always assumed it was because there was a lot of red tape on his end considering what I am to people in this village, said Naruto while Tsunade sighed and mentally cursed her late sensei for acting the way he did with the blonde in front of her. I'll handle it, Naruto. If they give you any trouble... Tell them I will be down shortly, and will be looking over everything myself if necessary, said Tsunade with Naruto frowning at her. Funny. He said the same thing. Don't bother interfering. I'll handle them myself, said Naruto before leaving with his pay stub. What happened to you, Naruto? Why are you being so cold? This isn't like you, said Tsunade with Naruto stopping at the door. Normally, I wouldn't be like this. 
But after spending time away from Kanoha and been taught things I was denied for years, I felt change was necessary. Why do you care? I would think a mature version of myself would be an improvement over the stupid one you first met three years ago, said Naruto before walking out the door. Should we be worried Hokage-sama? asked Yamato with Tsunade's side and waved the concern off. No. Naruto has a lot of anger in him at the moment. Anger put there by this very village and brought to the surface after being away for so long. If he wants to vent some of the anger out, let him do it. Maybe afterwards, it will open the eyes of these morons down below what it means to abuse a child and act like it is no big deal simply because said child is a genturiki, said Tsunade before the door opened again and three people she didn't want to see were now in the room looking as serious as ever. So it is true. The genturiki killed both Orochimaru and Kabuto, commented Danzo while Tsunade narrowed her eyes at him. He has a name Danzo. You would do well to remember that, warned Tsunade, but it was clear the old warhawk didn't care about that right now. He never did. Asshole. Did he explain how it was done, demanded Koharu while staring at the giant white snake head that was Orochimaru's face. He did. But I'm under no obligation to tell you, said Tsunade while all three elders frowned at her. Tsunade, you know it is imperative for us to know these things. First the two Akatsuki members. Now Orochimaru and Kabuto. As members of your council, we demand that you tell us how strong the Jinchuriki has become, demanded Hamura while Tsunade grit her teeth in anger. You demand something from me? You dare say that to my face? You demand to know the answer to your question? Of me? Your Hokage? questioned Tsunade while the old man tried to keep his courage up despite her anger. The Jinchuriki is quite powerful Tsunade. Knowledge of what he can do since his time away is crucial in keeping this village's weapon in check, said Danzo while Tsunade was seething at this continued disrespect toward Naruto. It was bad enough Jiraiya did it and even her when she first met the brat but these three were clearly going to be disrespectful to Naruto until the day they died, which she was hoping would be soon. He has a name Danzo. If you can't even say his name, don't be in the same room as me or him. In fact, if you can't stand the idea of referring to him by his name, I suggest you simply kill yourself now. No one in this office will disrespect him while I am Hokage, said Tsunade while Danzo scowled and the other two elders looked shocked. Tsunade. You can't be serious, protested Koharu. You want to talk serious? Jiraiya hasn't been training the boy for the last three years. In fact, Jiraiya has proven himself incompetent in that area and has done it on purpose. It was fortunate that Naruto decided to take the initiative and go to the Toads themselves for training. Unlike my former teammate, they were ready to help get him stronger for the enemy we know is waiting to strike, said Tsunade while the elders looked even further displeased. Whether due to Jiraiya neglecting Naruto's training or the fact Naruto got the training he needed to grow stronger was unknown. He should have been sent to me for training from the start. I could have molded him properly into a ruthless shinobi, said Danzo with Tsunade narrowing her eyes. There is no question about that last part Danzo. Provided he wasn't a Jinchuriki. But the fact still remains, Naruto being trained like one of your old root nin wouldn't work very well for anyone. Jinchuriki need their emotions, and the lack of them will make one weak to the point where they are simply cannon fodder to be used on an enemy. Not only that, but I highly doubt you want to risk Naruto snapping mentally and pulling in Itachi on an even greater level before we could stop him. Besides, we all know any shinobi you train or is conditioned to your root training is basically programmed to be loyal only to you. We all know the boy would have been used in a coup. 
to take the position of Hokage from me, said Tsunade with Danzo saying nothing since it was true and just chose not to acknowledge what the woman accused him of doing being fact. Danzo would have made the boy his loyal pawn and used him in a coup to take Kanoha from his old rival or the woman in front of him. Not that he would admit it outright. Let the woman in the Hokage seat accuse him of possibly snagging the Kyubi Jinchuriki for his own purposes. His silence spoke nothing, yet everything to Tsunade, but without proof, it was just her spouting off nonsense. Which worked fine for him since it made the woman look inadequate in being Hokage. What does Jiraiya have to say on the subject of the Lu boy? asked Tamura curiously while he changed the subject back to the village's Jinchuriki. What do you think? He is acting like an angry man-child about it. Naruto resents him for the lack of training received from the beginning and knows Jiraiya did it deliberately. Not only that, but I imagine the Toads told Naruto quite a few things that no one ever thought would be revealed to him until much later in life. Certain things we would rather take to our grave before letting see the light of day, commented Tsunade while the elders now had a look of fear on them. Even Danzo. They wouldn't dare. Hiruzen forbid the boy from learning anything until he was ready, exclaimed Koharu while Tsunade scowled at her. And when would this sense of readiness be determined, Koharu? When we were all on our deathbeds. When Naruto himself was old, gray-haired, and too weak to do anything if he felt like it. Besides, Sensei only forbid Kanoha Shinobi from telling him. The Toad summons do not fall into that category. He is also their summoner and therefore have the right to tell him things we would not, said Tsunade while none of the three elders liked this one bit. His mind needs to be wiped or suppressed of these things, stated Danzo immediately while the others agreed. No. I forbid it. Naruto knows what he knows and that's fine. He should have known the things he does now from the start. Sensei made the wrong choice on how to raise Naruto and Kanoha. He let the village treat the boy like a punching bag in order for them to vent out their frustrations and damn near stunted the boy's growth and potential beyond repair. We all know that if my grandfather, granduncle, and grandmother were here they would have piled a lot of bodies in the middle of the village square for what this place has done to him. And don't bother denying it. I know enough about the issue to know that all three of you helped in its very orchestration. You are all just as guilty as he was when alive and even more so to let it continue, said Tsunade while knowing these three had the pull in Kanoha's own government to make it happen. To say otherwise would insult everyone's intelligence in this room. We did what was best for Kanoha. Such potential had to either be stunted, controlled, or both to the point where the good boy could not attack us. Hiruzen understood this and decided to let things play out. Whether or not it went against the wishes of the fourth Hokage was irrelevant. The needs of the village as a whole outweighed the wishes of the select few, said Hamura while Tsunade scowled. Says the select few who preyed on the fears of the whole village to get what they had wanted from the start. Says the people in front of me who are afraid to actually make the selfless sacrificial play to ensure Kanoha lives to see the next day. You three are a bunch of sniveling cowards who throw away the true patriots of this village just to sit in your cushy seats of power while judging others for the work they do, said Tsunade while the elders made scowling faces at her to indicate she was not only right, but they hated being called out on it. So what will you do now, Tsunade? asked Danzo curiously while wondering what she had planned to do about the village's weapon. It is Hokage-sama to you, Danzo. If you can't call me by my title, I suggest you not come to any more council meetings and officially retire from all service. As to your question, I will let Naruto do as he wishes. If anyone tries to fuck with him from now on, it will be their own damn fault if he finally decides to smash their stupid faces through a wall or two, said Tsunade while the elders didn't like her answer at all. So you condone him lashing out at Kanoha? At its people? 
At us? asked Tamura while Sonate scowled. Yes. I do. As to what I do not condone Hamura-san is people in this village, which my grandfather built, trying to hurt Naruto and thinking they can get away with it. This village needs a wake-up call, if not a kick in the ass. Who better to kick it than Naruto, said Tsunade with the elders grimacing. They really didn't like her decision now. The people will not stand for this Hokage-sama, warned Hamura while Tsunade glared at him. If they are looking for someone to blame on the issue when Naruto starts beating people bloody, they can either look in the fucking mirror, or they can turn their anger out on the three of you for setting this in motion from the start. Take your pick, said Tsunade while giving those three a choice knowing the people would come bitching to them first before they went to her. Either have these old buzzards turn the blame on the people for hating Naruto since his birth, or accept the blame, the hate, and anger of the mob that would no doubt form as a result of their machinations which brought about its conception. Either way, she didn't give a shit and something told her neither would Naruto if he were here in her position. Sure enough, the elders were right about not liking Tsunade's decision regarding Naruto and letting him do what he wanted should someone try to mess with him. It was quite the shock and wake-up call for Kanoha to see the boy they hated suddenly retaliate against them. The first to feel his wrath was the payroll department following his return to the village after killing Orochimaru and Kabuto while bringing back Sasuke. They had tried to cheat him of the full amount from the bounties and mission pay stating demon tax along with some other nonsense. All with cruel smiles on their faces since they had done it before to him without fear of being punished by the higher-ups and Tsunade's Hokage predecessor. If anything, they were encouraged to do it. Naruto's response? Beating them bloody before throwing their bodies in front of the hospital. Naturally, the idiots wanted to press charges against him and make a big deal about it before the Hokage. And why not? The people usually bitched and complained to the third about the brat, even when Naruto didn't do anything at all. However, they weren't dealing with the Sandame Hokage. They were dealing with the Gandame Hokage. As a result, Tsunade said she had absolutely no problem pressing charges against Naruto, provided they admitted to screwing the boy over for years on his mission pay, and had no doubt tried it prior to the beating he dished out on them. It made them go pale in fear knowing full well that admitting to such things to the Hokage would result in prison time and all assets were liquidated before being transferred to Naruto. In short, Tsunade effectively shut them up. And to prove there were no hard feelings, the idiots in question were transferred out to another department that didn't involve Naruto at all, but with significantly reduced pay on their end. Sadly, it didn't end there with those bakas. As time progressed, Naruto had not received a warm welcome from many of the people in the village and he was not inclined to stand there taking it. The end result was piles of bodies being sent to hospital every other day regardless if they were shinobi or civilian. Naturally, People tried to pressure Tsunade into doing something to bring the demon under control again or anything that would return things to the status quo, which basically involved having Naruto as their punching bag again. Tsunade told them no and that they were getting what was coming to them for their own mistreatment of the boy since it was unwarranted from the start. If they wanted to file charges, it was their right but she reminded the poor victims that doing so would require an investigation on her part into their past and any previous actions they did to provoke Naruto into attacking them in the first place. She would make sure to dig up every dirty trick, act, abuse, and horror the people had done to the boy no matter how insignificant it may appear. After all, she had to hear both sides of the story and find out which side was telling the truth. Various other shinobi were targeted too. Kakashi for one. The evaluation spar had been one of many beatdowns Naruto had given him due to the fact the man was the student of the blonde's father. 
Instead of protecting him as a child or teaching him when on a team, the asshole taught next to nothing and focused entirely on Sasuke during that time. Speaking of Sasuke, the elders were moving for the Uchiha to have his punishment from being one of imprisonment to that of house arrest. Tsunade, of course, denied it, stating they might as well have pardoned Itachi or even Orochimaru if the man were still alive for all their past misdeeds. The information obtained from various sources at the Dead Sanin's many bases revealed the Uchiha had tested his skills against the many prisoners Orochimaru collected. Sasuke had killed, crippled, maimed, and tortured many people either for training or to satisfy his various dark appetites. So why give this Uchiha any leeway at all? Because of his bloodline? It wasn't as special as everyone made it out to be given all you had to do was use flash bombs or other various methods that hurt a person's eyesight. Tsunade knew there were shinobi that didn't have dojitsu bloodline and were ten times stronger than the Uchiha at the brat's age. Still, rumor had it the elders were going to use some law that they often used to get their way and overrule her standing on the matter. Which they did. Only when they came to free Sasuke from his cell, they found the two ANBU, secretly root ANBU, guarding the cell were dead, killed in a very brutal fashion, and the Uchiha was found dead in his cell. The boy had both of his eyes ripped out of their sockets, a leg and arm were missing, his intestines ripped out and pile on the floor, and upon further inspection noticed blood pooling between his legs unrelated to the last one. The final injury indicating someone had castrated the Uchiha to prevent anyone from having his children and to the rebirth of the Uchiha clan. Naturally, they blamed Naruto, which he openly admitted to doing without shame once brought before the Hokage, the elders, and the clan heads. Originally, Danzo pushed for Naruto to be imprisoned for the act, calling it treason, and proclaimed him an enemy of the village. He never realized it until the blonde's trap was sprung, as Naruto wanted the Warhawk to make a spectacle out of this during the trial. Naruto had called Danzo out on his own patriotism for being a supporter of Orochimaru before the Sanin even went rogue and recruiting the snake into root. Naturally, Danzo denied the accusations fired back at him, calling Naruto in it, a weapon speaking out of turn and disobedient tool unfit to proudly serve Kanoha along with mentioning that there wasn't an ounce of proof the Jinchuriki was telling them the truth. Producing what Sai had on him, the letter addressed to Orochimaru from Danzo with the identities of the various ANBU loyal to Tsunade said otherwise. It was only when Danzo saw the information he gave to Sai and looking back at Naruto did the old Warhawk put two and two together on how his subordinate truly died that day. Not only that, but Naruto had the Toads do some infiltrating of Danzo's base underneath Kanoha, making copies of the files there and soon plopping them on Tsunade's desk. It was amusing to the blonde Jinchuriki to see Danzo's usually emotionless face show fear and anger at having his plans exposed to those he didn't want to see said plans. Even worse, Naruto had surprised him by using a small wind jutsu to cut the bandages around the Warhawk's face off to reveal the Sharingan I hidden there. Before Danzo could even move to flee or summon Root to his aid, Chakra change from Naruto wrapped around him and squeezed to the point where the man cried out in pain from the pressure. By the time a chakra suppressing tag could be put on him, Danzo was on his knees and glaring up at Naruto's face. The boy had placed the seal right on his forehead and was so strong, it actually forced the Sharingan in Danzo's head to turn to a normal black orb to further prove it came from an Uchiha. Even worse for the Warhawk, his hidden arm had been exposed with the arm itself now looking like it was rotting from the lack of chakra running to it along with the Sharingan eyes literally crying bloody tears. Danzo, of course, was defiant to the end when called out about his actions, stating that everything he did was for Kanoha. How he was a patriot, doing what no one else had the courage or strength to do when it mattered most. 
how he should have been Hokage. How Hiruzen cheated him out of it the first time around thanks to Toborama, and even later on when Minato became Hokage over Orochimaru. Since the Sanin had once been in his root program, Danzo felt he could hold more leverage through his former subordinate and be the true leader working from the shadows to bring about his version of Kanoha. How following the fourth's death, Hiruzen once again took the position of Hokage again, and later Tsunade taking it upon the Sandame's death to further deny his ambition. When it came to the Uchiha clan, Danzo confessed to influencing the event to a degree where he lied to them about staying back when the Kubi attacked. He wanted everyone in Kanoha to believe they were somehow responsible. Planting the seeds of distrust and resentment knowing the village would eventually turn on them. To make things so bad for the clan that they would wish to rebel and could set things in motion to put it down while harvesting their eyes. How he used Orochimaru's desire to splice bloodlines to get him to do it with both Senju and Uchiha together to one day take control of not just the Kyubi, but all nine Biju. How he planned to take all nine back to Kanoha and rule from his position like a god while finding a way to use the chakra of the Biju to sustain his life eternally and becoming true immortal without equal. As to why he confessed so freely, Naruto had put a special matrix in the few injutsu used to seal Danzo's chakra to force the brain into speaking the truth when asked any question. It also helped stimulate the aggression part of the brain so when answered, the person with the seal on them would sound angry, frustrated, and spiteful like they had been cheated. Which is exactly how Naruto wanted Danzo to be portrayed before having the old man's head sliced clean off. Even the seal on Danzo's torso was deactivated since there was no chakra left for the man to try sending into the system to kill everyone. With Danzo out of the way, Tsunade quickly had the other two elders arrested despite their own vocal protests. Until Naruto told them they had two choices. One being they were imprisoned in their homes until they died. The second was him killing them both here in the office and have their sins brought to light and shaming them forever along with Danzo. They quietly took option one, but they still gave him a glare for doing this to them. As if it was his fault they had done such horrible things in life. Naruto's response to their glare? Telling them to fuck off and getting the fuck out of his sight before he did to them what was done to their favorite Uchiha. He would visit and kill their wrinkled old asses later of course. They still could try rallying the root mean Danzo had underground to stage a last minute coup against Tsunade. No one wanted that. With the internal threat to Kanoha taken care of now, Tsunade could refocus her efforts on the Akatsuki. At the moment, the group was down two whole members. With Sasuke's death eventually getting out, the Hokage had no doubt Itachi would come back to Kanoha to pay a visit to find out what happened to his little brother. And she wasn't disappointed. Itachi had come back to Kanoha to kill Naruto since he knew the Uzumaki would be the only one to go that far to hurt and kill Sasuke. The man was livid when he came back to the village after Zetsu had revealed what happened to the younger Uchiha. Itachi knew he was disobeying pain, Tobi slash Madara, and even Jiraiya himself when the Sanin got word of Itachi heading for Kanoha to kill the Jinchuriki. Uchiha Itachi wouldn't hear them. He was out for blood. Uzumaki blood. Naruto's blood. Only when facing Naruto did the Uchiha realize how outmatched he was when facing the younger ninja. Naruto was ready for him. It was clear the blonde knew the Uchiha would come back to Kanoha to not only get answers, but to avenge his little brother's death. An ironic twist really considering Sasuke wanted to kill Itachi to avenge the clan. So you came to avenge Sasuke. That's ironic all things considered. And the avenging part coming from you no less. Before I kill you in a way equivalent to what you did to my little brother, tell me why. Why did you kill Sasuke? Why mutilate him? Did he sever the bond you had with him so badly that the only way to make the pain stop was to kill him? 
Q Naruto laughing at Itachi. You honestly think I felt any kind of pain from him severing our so-called bond that we had with each other? I felt no such pain. The only pain I felt from Sasuke was the three times he tried to kill me all those years ago during our fight at the Valley of the End in order to get to Orochimaru. Your brother was bastard. One you helped make with your actions and fucking over his mind. Twice. You didn't have to kill him, Naruto. He could have been imprisoned. Rehabilitated from the ground up if possible. You honestly believe that after Orochimaru invested those three years into molding your little brother to be his next host? You think Sasuke was going to stop walking his angry path of darkness and vengeance directed at you if he managed to end your life? What makes you think he would stop hating? Stop hurting others? Because you were dead? Because of you, hatred is the only thing Sasuke knew when it came to having a purpose. With you gone, Sasuke would have been a wild rabbit animal roaming the elemental countries. Killing just about everything and anyone who so much is sneezed right in his general direction without pity, mercy, or remorse. You don't know that. Actually, I do. He told me as much before I killed him. You lie. Not about this. Why do you think I did what I did? He was going to be released from his prison by Danzo and the elders. Going around the Hokage's authority. His guards were Danzo's root name. They relayed to him what Danzo told them. He was going to be under house arrest with ANBU supposedly watching him. Though we both know it would be the root ANBU watching him. Not the ones loyal to the Hokage. That doesn't explain why you killed Sasuke and that he admitted to killing people after I was dead. But it does. I easily killed the root ANBU myself and saw Sasuke in his cell with chakra suppressing cuffs on. He had this knowing smirk on his face. As if everything I had done would mean absolutely nothing. You should have heard him talking in his usual superior attitude. How he was going to get let out. How he was going to train. How he was going to turn the village against me for the brutal beating I gave his ass before bringing him back to Kanoha. How he was their favorite. How in eyes of the village he could do no wrong. How he was going to play them like a fiddle into believing going to Orochimaru was a mission to grow strong while infiltrating the Sanin's base of operations. How he was eventually going to go rogue again to hunt your ass down and hurt anyone deemed a threat to his plans to kill you. Sasuke practically admitted to me that he would have no problem burning down an entire orphanage with innocent men, women, and children inside if it meant killing you. I see. And the castration? Your little brother apparently likes the idea of raping any woman that remotely piques his interests. He said as much. Fortunately, he didn't sense there wasn't a woman in sound or the surrounding regions visited in the last three years with one that caught his eyes. Hell, I wouldn't have castrated him if not for the fact he said, why would I care if a woman is willing or not? Any woman should be grateful I fuck her raw and was given the seed of an Uchiha elite. I will take any woman I want regardless if they are willing or not. I will impregnate any woman I want and use my Sharingan to implant a suggestive command for them to keep and raise said child. Besides, women are only good for giving men like me strong offspring to carry on their legacy. They have no other purpose in life so it's not a crime if I do that to them. So as you can imagine, I took it upon myself to ensure there would be no future child descended from his bloodline. My brother did not say that. He wouldn't admit to doing such a thing or wanting to do such a thing. I have it on tape and on camera. The Hokage had a hidden camera implanted in his cell long before he was put in it. No one knew about the camera except her, Shizun, and myself. Not even Danzo or the elders knew it existed. 
She figured Danzo might make a play on Sasuke and wanted evidence of his actions in recruiting the Uchiha into Root so she could handle him her way. Personally, I wasn't about to stand around and let those two play politics and risk letting the issue of Sasuke's punishment get muddied or hidden under the rug. I took the direct approach to the matter and as a result, I was able to fully expose Danzo's schemes. I also know you aren't the traitor the Sandame and Kanoha painted you to be following that night. No one can know the truth. The populace would never understand it would only make the Uchiha clan hated for all time. Even if Danzo was the one to cause it in the first place. I don't care about your clan. I don't care about what you think or feel, Itachi. You made your brother into a monster. You made him into a hate-feeling emo piece of shit all so he could one day kill you. And for what? All to redeem the Uchiha clan when in truth, it was doomed the moment you started ending their lives. And now that Sasuke is dead, your so-called chance for the clan being redeemed is lost. No thanks to you. I'm not your brother's fucking life support. I am not going to give up my life for him and to fix your mistakes. You wanted him to redeem your clan? You shouldn't have fucked with his head twice over. You turned him into a rabid dog. You shouldn't be surprised when someone comes along in an attempt to put him down and to do it successfully. All the same, you will suffer for killing my little brother. You will suffer for not carrying out your purpose in life. The Sandame saw you as the village's sacrifice to save us from destruction. You were meant to be used as such repeatedly over time. The fact you refuse to accept this truth is a betrayal of his trust in you, a betrayal of this village, and one to my brother. I will not stand for it, says the man who killed nearly all of his kin. As for the Sandame, he can take his legacy and go fuck himself. The man I looked up to as a boy was a lie. It was always a lie. To cover for his mistakes, his shame, and his weaknesses in being sentimental to the wrong people. He was soft on Danzo. He was soft on Orochimaru. He was soft on your clan. And he was soft on Sasuke. You call my actions a betrayal? What about yours? You didn't have to kill all of the Uchiha, but chose to do it anyway. So tell me, Itachi, who is the true traitor between us? The shinobi who officially is one and makes them through his actions? Or the shinobi who puts them down? Cue silence. It seems we have nothing left to talk about. Agreed. Goodbye, Itachi. Send my regards to that bastard you call a brother in hell. You first, Jinchuriki. The battle between Naruto and Itachi was fierce. Both coming at the other with the intent to kill. But not even Itachi for all his skill, training, and power with his Sharingan eyes could match Naruto's mastery of using Kurama's chakra mixed with Senjutsu. The entire time they were talking, Naruto had been absorbing it right into his body and gearing up for their fight. And boy did they fight. When it was over, the training field looked like a war zone. The trees were either uprooted or incinerated. The ground had craters everywhere with ninja weapons scattered all over. And on the ground in the biggest of the craters was Itachi. Or what was left of him. The Uchiha had tried to use Susanoo against Naruto while the Jinchuriki used his hidden ace up his sleeve in the form of his Raisin Shuriken to obliterate anything Itachi could muster for a defense. When Naruto walked over to the remains of the Uchiha, he saw the man was barely clinging onto to life. His limbs were gone one way or another. His eyes were destroyed and most of his internal organs were destroyed by the overall attack. It was actually a miracle the Uchiha was still alive for as long as he was to have one final conversation with Naruto before death. You won't win, Naruto. Your enemy, your true enemy in the Akatsuki, is stronger than I am. My death will only delay the final confrontation. 
This plan the Akatsuki has created for the nine Biju was set in motion before you were born. Back when Jiraiya was still in his prime. How much does Jiraiya know about the Akatsuki? Has he kept things from Tsunade? From me? Things not even the Toads know? Yes. He knows things about the organization from what I was able to tell him. Things not even the Hokage knows. Jiraiya kept things even from the Sandame. As for the Toads, if they knew the true extent of his involvement in certain events leading up to the Akatsuki's birth, it would anger them greatly. Why? Tell me why. Because the leader of the Akatsuki is known as Payne and his partner Conan were former students of Jiraiya. He found them as orphans near him along with a third boy named Yahiko. He trained them to survive the harshness of their environment and saw one of them had the eyes of the sage. The Rinnegan. If that is true, why didn't he take them with him back to Kanoha? Why didn't Jiraiya raise you when it was his duty as your godfather? Point taken. So what happened next? I honestly do not know. All I know is one of them died and Madara came along shortly to corrupt the organization. Capturing the nine Biju and using their combined might as a deterrent for war was his idea he implanted in Payne's mind. The ultimate weapon to be used as a deterrent to force peace on the world. But it's a lie. Madara has other plans that do not involve such things. Madara is dead. He's too old to be alive. The man claiming to be him says otherwise. What does he look like? Does he wear Madara's armor? Does he have the Sharingan? No. He wears a spiral mask and standard ninja gear under his Akatsuki robes and calls himself Toby in front of the group. Plus, he pretends to be an idiot so none of the other members know he is Madara. But to answer your last question, yes. He does have the Sharingan and can turn it off. Only an Uchiha can do that so the man is clearly from my clan. Which further proves he isn't Madara. The real Madara would never do such a thing in front of anyone. Acting like an idiot and hiding behind a mask is not something the real Madara would do. His pride would never allow it. He's clearly an Uchiha, but clearly not the most infamous one. Nevertheless, he calls himself Madara. He was the one who attacked the night of your birth and ripped the QB from your mother's body to take control of it. Only someone like Madara could that in the past. I figured as much from what the fox showed me from his own memories of that night with my parents dying. Doesn't matter. I know enough about the fool to plan a proper defense against his little time space manipulation and transparency technique. When the time does come, I'll crush the Akatsuki and any who support them. You swim against the tide. You will drown in the attempt. Perhaps, but I have no problem making waves that will set change in motion before I do. A kunai to the skull later and Uchiha Itachi was no longer alive. After he did that, Naruto found Tsunade had come with a small army of ANBU, the clan heads, Jounin, and Jiraiya with the last one glaring at the Jinchuriki. Of course, Naruto wasn't surprised the man was upset with him. Not only did the blonde Uzumaki prove he was strong, but he had killed Jiraiya's only spy that high up in the Akatsuki organization. Never once did he show concern for Naruto's own health or the fact that Tachi no longer acted as a spy for him when coming back to Kanoha to kill for revenge. Of course, Tsunade was also angry, but surprisingly, her anger was not aimed at Naruto for killing Itachi. He didn't do anything wrong despite Jiraiya saying otherwise. No. The woman's anger was aimed at Jiraiya for not informing her of Itachi being a spy in the first place. She also felt the truth regarding the Uchiha clan plotting a coup and Itachi doing it in order to spy on the Akatsuki should have been brought to her attention after becoming Hokage. Jiraiya disagreed. 
stating if he told her where some of his key spies were, it would make his value as a spy master diminish. Plus, the less she apparently knew about who his spies were in various parts of the world, the better. Plausible deniability were the two words he chose to reference, but Tsunade thought differently since Jiraiya's current handling of Kanoha's spy network had become, well, crappy. From what Tsunade had gathered since Jiraiya had been out of the village for twelve years to provide Kanoha with information, which he passed along to the Sandame, the informants were not reporting in on time or their information was vague at best. Some had threatened to quit unless given an increased paycheck and holding the information they held as key leverage. Others threatened to go to the enemies of Kanoha to provide them with the key information they held in exchange for immunity for past spying. Others simply wanted out because the Toad Sanin had found them in dire straits at the time of first meeting them and continued to blackmail these people unless they played ball with the pervert. Some of these spies were women, and from what Tsunade had been able to carefully read, in between the lines of course, her former teammate had gotten far more than just the information from their spying from them. If it wasn't from the fact they were in such valuable spots and needed for them, Tsunade would pull those spies, especially the women, out with those willing to take over. But she knew replacing old spies with new ones was extremely tricky, and there was also the fact if she assumed correctly about some things. Jiraiya would never let those female spies go on living knowing the tables would turn on him in terms of who was blackmailing who. If these women, if allowed, told the various people in positions of power about Jiraiya and what he did to them in order to obtain their loyalty as spies, among other things, it would not only severely damage his, already questionable, reputation, but put Kanoha in a bad light too. It seemed no matter what, her former teammate for a pervert left a big fat stain or stink on Kanoha that no one could remove no matter how hard they tried. Even worse, Jiraiya had some debts of his own outside the village that were not on the books and had conveniently forgetting about. Until they came to bite him in the ass. The first one was the issue with the Nadashiko village, which was waiting for Jiraiya to honor his promise he made to the to the former leader of said village years ago. The Kunoichi from said village named Tokiwa came with Shizuka to Kanoha after hearing about Naruto killing so many s rank Nin and the other rumor he was Jiraiya's student. Tsunade had admitted the boy was Jiraiya's student, and using the term loosely, for a short time, but had a falling out over the teaching methods, again she used the Tim loosely, the Sanin used during that time frame. After hearing what Jiraiya had promised, Tsunade had all the more reason, and desired to smash her former teammate's head into the ground before breaking every other bone in his body. Starting with the tiny one he had between his legs since that seemed to be where his damn brain seemed to relocate itself 98% of the time. As for Jiraiya himself, the pervert had conveniently made himself scarce when hearing how two Kunoichi from Nadashiko had come to Kanoha. Fucking coward. As for Naruto, he accepted the challenge, but on the condition of choosing to nullify any marriage arrangement between them. If he was going to honor the agreement made by Jiraiya, his possible future bride would have to be strong enough to make him sweat a bit to earn the right to be his future wife. After all, if she wasn't strong enough to last against him in a drawn-out fight, how can she be good wife material for him to marry? If he was not impressed, the arranged marriage would be nullified, and that would be the end of it. Shizuka found it acceptable, and surprisingly so did Tokiwa, who smirked at how Naruto was able to turn their village's laws against them. Shizuka hated those laws that said she had to fight the man who would be her future husband if he won against her. The man she loved was dead, and closing off her heart was the only thing left for Shizuka to do. Even with Naruto's condition, Shizuka still wanted this whole mission to end, and just let him win by default. If not for her Kunoichi pride and the pride of her village being at stake. Besides, Naruto had made it clear the only way for this to work one way or another was the woman going all out against him. And so they fought. 
with Tsunade and Tokiwa as witnesses to the event along with a few curious Kanoha shinobi. Only to have a pest and puppeteer named Kokuyo, who wanted Shizuka for himself, and to rule Nadashiko like a king to interfere in the fighting. Of course, he was easily crushed thanks to Shizuka destroying his puppet, and was quickly arrested by the Hokage for his entering the village illegally. The fight between Naruto and Shizuka continued with the latter trying to hit the former with everything she had. But in the end, the Kunoichi failed to so much as make Naruto bleed, even for one second. It was clear that he was just too strong for her and could not win no matter what she did. In the end, Shizuka lost, but at the same time, won the right to live freely without having to be married to someone she didn't love. Not that she didn't find Naruto ugly. Quite the opposite. She found him handsome and after getting to know him following their fight had almost made Shizuka regret not marrying the young shinobi. The fact he was so strong and not ranked higher was a bit of a bafflement to her. It was only when he openly admitted to being a Jinchuriki did she understand his rank being that of a Jinin while everyone else was Chunin or higher. She had heard stories about the Jinchuriki in general. Mostly hated. Used as weapons of war. Tied to the village Kage on some level. How they were violent. Bloodthirsty. How the one in Kiri became Mizukic and had caused a civil war with those having bloodlines. Suna's own Jinchuriki had been killing people shortly after the time he could walk and clearly enjoyed it. But seeing Naruto and talking to him showed her that not all Jinchuriki were like that in regards to killing everyone in their path. In fact, Naruto cleared up why Gara was the way he was in the first place and how it wasn't the kid's fault. Rather his father did it and didn't even have the courage to consider the option of having the faulty seal looked at to fix Gara's inability to sleep at night. Insomnia and having a biju in your head constantly talking about killing and spilling blood was not good for someone's mental health. When it was finally time to leave, Shizuka bid Naruto farewell and even being so bold as to kiss him on the cheek while thanking him getting her out of this situation. Naruto gave her a genuine smile. One he rarely gave to anyone, but still gave to those who deserved it. He almost missed the blush that formed on Shizuka's face when she turned to leave the village and wondered if marrying the woman wouldn't be such a bad idea. He did have a clan to revive after all and Naruto got the distinct impression his mother was on the other side saying give me grandbabies right now. You're such a pervert Naruto, accused Sakura with her arms crossed and face forming into a scowl. Oh really? Her kissing me on the cheek makes me a pervert? You wouldn't be saying that if Sasuke kissed you on the cheek, countered Naruto while Sakura's scowl deepened on her face. She should have castrated you, remarked Sakura after witnessing the whole thing. For what? Winning our fight, asked Naruto with a scowl of his own. That's and for simply being the super pervert student, answered Sakura bitterly while Naruto scoffed at her knowing her reason for being this was due to Sasuke. She never would forgive him for killing and castrating Sasuke if the truth got out to her on the subject. The Kunoichi in front of him would no doubt feel the Uchiha's possible future children deserved some chance at redemption. I wasn't his student. Not for the last year and a half. And the first year and a half, he did absolutely nothing except peep on women and drink himself stupid at bars. With my own money no less after stealing it. Not much for a training trip between master and student, is it? Naruto shot back while Sakura scoffed back. Or maybe you were just a poor student looking for an excuse not to do any of the heavy lifting needed to get stronger, mocked Sakura, which earned her a blast of killing intent and making the Kunoichi show signs of sweating. Says the Uchiha fangirl who couldn't do anything to literally save her life when she was younger and we were on missions. It took you a C-turned A-rank mission, an invasion by two shinobi villages, and three years with the new Hokage to snap you out of it. Of course, 
judging from the negative feelings coming off of you right now, I take it you still hate the fact I didn't treat our former teammate with kid gloves this time around, said Naruto while not mentioning Sasuke was now dead by his hands. As far as Sakura knew, the Uchiha was still imprisoned in a cell, and for a very long time befitting his treachery. No doubt his pink-haired teammate thought she could one day try to convince the Hokage later to help in bringing Sasuke back into the fold. Why shatter her dreams and fantasies about the jerk? Tsunade could do that for him. He was our friend Naruto. Friends don't do that to each other, counted Sakura, but the glare and killing intent from Naruto only increased. Oh? And what about what he did to me? You say friends don't hurt friends? Well, our so-called friend tried and succeeded in hurting me. Even worse, he tried to kill me. As far as I am concerned here, Sakura, the team was not a friend. He was not a teammate. He was a power-hungry asshole and deserved the beating I gave him, if not more, stated Naruto before he left. I'm sure Sasuke Kuen feels regret for doing what he did Naruto. Can't you feel any at all for him? asked Sakura while Naruto stopped and glanced back. My only regret, Sakura, is the simple fact I didn't do worse when we fought each other for that brief moment, said Naruto before he was gone in swirl of leaves. And leaving Sakura shocked at his words. Following that incident, Tsunade wanted more answers from Jiraiya about the Akatsuki and who was this leader Itachi mentioned before dying. It was clear by the Uchiha's last words that her former teammate knew more than he was letting on or was going to reveal for one reason or another. Of course, Jiraiya was being tight-lipped on the issue about the Akatsuki and refused to answer. At least the first. It was amazing how breaking yes few ribs, a leg, three fingers on each hand, and the threat of castration could loosen one's tongue. So Jiraiya reluctantly admitted how the leader of the Akatsuki was another former and secret student. One Jiraiya claimed was believed to be dead years ago. One he thought wasn't truly important despite the fact the boy in question had the legendary Renegan eyes in his possession. It was a major blunder on Jiraiya's part and even more so when the Sanin inadvertently admitted the boy's last name was in fact Uzumaki. Possibly a distant relative of Kushina's in some manner, or at the very least a cousin from within the Uzumaki clan itself. A boy named Nagato, who apparently abandoned his name for the new one he gave himself and was now called Pain. Jiraiya further admitted he had known for some time who Pain really was and wanted to go to Aim to fix his mistake in letting Pain become too powerful. Tsunade forbid it. If Jiraiya was going to go, it was not going to be alone, and on some self-sacrificing mission designed to redeem himself in the eyes of Naruto. She knew Jiraiya well enough that he would do such a thing for two main reasons. One, to avoid the fight that she knew Naruto really wanted to have with him. And second, to make sure that his noble actions left a powerful impression on Naruto's own psyche to influence the boy to doing things while following Jiraiya's beliefs. Not his own. Essentially hijacking Naruto's own free will and trying to control it from beyond the grave with his memorable actions of sacrificing himself for the greater good. Naruto wouldn't have it. And told Jiraiya as such. He wouldn't allow Jiraiya to get out of their fight using pain as an excuse. Nor allow the man to sacrifice himself in the hopes his death would have some kind of influence from beyond the grave. Angered by this, Jiraiya shot back saying he didn't give a damn what Naruto wanted and never did care from the start. He was going to ensure the prophecy was fulfilled and his dreams would be realized over all others. Before either Naruto or Tsunade could try to do anything else, Jiraiya reversed summoned himself back the home of the Toads to recover there. Tsunade swore and cursed at Jiraiya for being a moron and trying to do something that had long-lasting consequences for those who had to clean up his messes. Naruto, however, 
chose to be calm about it like the toads taught him when training under them. Focus your mind, young tadpole. Rushing into things can get you killed. Your past history of doing so is proof of this. Think about what is happening and who is involved. Think how they might act and react accordingly. You do not need a dojitsu like the Sharingan to predict every single move your opponent makes. Just the major ones. Your mind can do that if it knows what to look for in a person and their own personal beliefs. Those had been the words of wisdom Pa had given him when training Naruto and wanted the boy to learn about looking before leaping. It was okay to sit still and think about the things around you before making the leap. It was the way of the toads, but it was also important to never sit for too long. Something Jiraiya had never been able to learn on his own and often abused in terms of knowing when to act or not to act on matters he deemed to be important. I know where he is going once healed, said Naruto while Tsunade scowled since it was obvious to her too regarding Jiraiya's destination. Aim. I'll get an ANBU squad together along with some Jounin. They'll drag him back before he can get halfway there, said Tsunade angrily. There is no point. He'll be there before the group can be deployed. Just send me, said Naruto with Tsunade looking shocked. Absolutely not. First off, you are still ranked a genin. Second, I would be giving the Akatsuki exactly what they want. Even if they didn't extract your biju right away, it does not mean they will make your time there as a prisoner any less pleasant. Some of them are pure sadists protested Tsunade while Naruto scoffed. First, they won't get me. You don't train as hard as I do, only to get captured. Second, you can promote me easily enough. Not to mention rank doesn't count for shit in the real world. And third, if I can kill Itachi, Orochimaru, Kabuto, Sasori of the Red Sands, and Deidara of the Mad Bomber of IWA, I can handle the others, said Naruto with Tsunade now glaring at him. Even if what you say is true, I would be an idiot to send you to aim alone without backup, said Tsunade with Naruto frowning. Perhaps, but it really depends on the backup, said Naruto with Tsunade looking like she had been slapped by him. You're suggesting the ninja I send would backstab you, questioned Tsunade while she saw Naruto's glare intensify. In a heartbeat. All those years growing up and I was getting beaten, they watched. Some even went as far as to join in. They knew who my father was. They knew enough about Fuenjutsu to know the difference between prison and prisoner. They did they care? No. Why would they? Who was going to remind them of their oaths to the fourth? Who was going to enforce it? The Sandane? He gave the order. Force the Kyubi Jinchuriki into submission. Make sure he is nothing like his mother. Like his father. Make him weak. Reliant on me. Reliant on those I tell him to be reliant on. You haven't rotated out the ANBU when becoming Hokage, and I can easily sense those in your office looking at me with hatred. You assign any of them to provide support, they'd sooner sell me out to the Akatsuki and make up any story they wanted, said Naruto while Tsunade winced since what he told her was true. What do you have in mind? asking Tsunade with Naruto shrugging. As I said, you just have to send me. We both know it will take some time for Jiraiya to heal from the beating you just gave him. The toads are more loyal to me over him. The moment he pops out of their realm, they will tell me. Once that happens, I'll head to aim and stop the fool from doing something stupid, said Naruto while Tsunade grimaced. Fine. Considering your actions since coming back and your level of power, if not your strength, I'm promoting you straight to Jounin, said Tsunade with Naruto looking a tad surprised. Are you sure you can do that? Won't the rest of the shinobi forces who hate my guts go throw a fit? Go on and on about procedure and exams and all that crap? 
Don't I have go through promotional ranks one at a time instead of skipping them? Questioned Naruto with Tsunade shrugging since she understood his surprise. He was expecting her to simply promote him to Chunin now, followed by Jounin in the distant future sometime later. I'm the Hokage. I can promote and demote whoever I like to any rank I like if they are qualified enough. Honestly, those exams are all meant to draw clients to our village on a large scale and to get the potential Jounin for their jobs. I can easily do that just as much after word gets out on how many S-ranked shinobi you recently killed, said Tsunade smirking at Naruto. Well, better late than never, said Naruto with a smirk of his own. Sometime later. Sure enough, the Akatsuki were not happy. Losing Itachi, Sasori, and Deidara was a very crippling blow to the organization. They needed to turn things around. Not to mention they needed to gain new recruits and an increase in finances. Which meant they needed to go out and collect high-paying bounties of various targets. Hence why the zombie brothers of the Akatsuki had sacked the fire temple for their intended target there knowing the money would help the organization greatly. Not to mention it would make the infamy of the Akatsuki grow knowing just two of them had destroyed the fire temple simply to collect the bounty on one person. Naturally, the monks fought back, only to fall, and die bloody death by their hands. It wasn't long before they encountered and fought Kanoha Shinobi in the form of Jounin Saratobi Asuma, who had nearly died at their hands from their two-on-one assault. Nearly. Well, if it isn't the undead bitches of the world. How is it hanging? Or do you undead assholes not even have dicks? taunted Naruto from his spot behind the two Akatsuki members and getting their attention. I'm going to enjoy sacrificing you to Jashin-sama, exclaimed Haydn angrily. Come out of that circle and do it yourself. Or do you have to ask your Jashin-sama to do it for you, like a pussy, mocked Naruto with Haydn looking livid while Kakuzu looked at the blonde with narrowed eyes and sensing the boy's strength. He's not weak like our initial reports claimed three years ago. Itachi said he was weak and had no way of mastering the Kyuubi's chakra within him. It was only because of Jiraiya that we failed to grab him. But if reports are to be believed, the Jinchuriki killed quite a few S-rank missing Nin since his return. Thought Kakuzu knowing the bounties Naruto earned from his recent kill count of high-valued targets had really pissed off the assigned treasurer of the Akatsuki to no end. The only reason Kakuzu didn't rush at Naruto was twofold. One, he wasn't a hot-headed idiot like Haydn. Two, he sensed Naruto's power easily enough to be reminded of the first Hokage all those years ago when trying to assassinate him. Kakuzu learned from his past mistakes regarding the late Shodame and knew going all out on Naruto was a mistake. Damn it, kid. Run, protested Asumo while Naruto surprised them all by glaring at him. Am I talking to you, Sarutobi-san? No? Good. Help is on the way, so stay still and try not to bleed to death, said Naruto before refocusing on the two Akatsuki members. A little harsh on your fellow John and I see, commented Kakuzu while getting ready for a fight. His father wronged me when I was a child. Not to mention the fool took a shot at me once when coming out of a bar drunk off his ass when I was six years old, said Naruto while Asuma winced from the memory since he did have a slight remembrance of that moment despite the drunken haze. He had been drunk at the time and angry with his old man. Hokage duties having driven a wedge between father and son. So when he came around a corner, near an alley, Asuma saw the six-year-old Uzumaki Naruto digging through a dumpster for food. The young Iruzen knew who the boy was and scowled in his drunken state and seeing the brat his father was interested in for so long. Why couldn't his father pay more attention to him? His son? Instead, his father focuses his attention on Naruto, regardless of the reason, which Hiruzen refused to specify about, and ignore the wishes of his own son. 
Anger and alcohol mixed in a chaotic swirl and Asuma's vision had mixed with red when attacking a surprised Uzumaki Naruto. The boy had dodged the first couple of punches, but the rest not so much, and soon Naruto had found himself pinned to an alley wall with a kunai to his shoulder. What followed was beating from the drunken shinobi along with those trench knives the man had on hand to slice up the brat pretty bad and give the poor blonde a near-fatal experience. And not once did the now Kanoha Jounin ever come forward and admit his shame or give Naruto an apologize for it. Instead, he acted like it never happened. Secretly buried under the rug and those who knew acting like it never happened. But Naruto knew. Naruto had a distinct memory of the faces of those who wronged him and Asuma was no exception. The only reason the blonde Jinchuriki didn't hunt the asshole down sooner was due to the Saratobi being out of the village on a long-term mission. It was only fitting the sick smoking Jounin suffer near death, bleeding from his many life-threatening injuries given to him by Haydn. The man's team would be here soon anyway. Eno was trained as a medic mean, so healing her old sensei wouldn't be too difficult for her. Ha! The little shit is hated in his village just like the others, exclaimed Haydn with a grin on his face. At least I have a shinobi village. Unlike you. I heard all about you, Jashin Priest. Your shinobi village lost its balls to be won and you went on a rampage as a result. Must have hurt to know your village didn't have what it takes. Did you cry? Whine like a bitch. Maybe even peed yourself like a little baby while crying like one, asked Naruto with a grin on his face while Haydn looked like he was ready to explode with rage. Only before he could, a shadow clone of Naruto struck from behind and kicked Haydn in the back of his head. The force behind it sent him flying out of the circle he made for himself to use against Asuma and ended the ritual. You fucker, yelled Haydn while Kakuzu frowned. Calm yourself, Haydn. He's upsetting you on purpose so you make mistakes, warned Kakuzu while Haydn snarled. Not hard to do. All it takes is insulting his impudent god and the moron goes on a tirade lasting for hours, taunted Naruto while Haydn was foaming at the mouth. I'm going to get your fucking as a a a h exclaimed Haydn when a shadow clone of Naruto shot out of the ground behind the priest, but this time took his head off with a wind-coated kunai. And surprisingly, the man's head kept on talking while cursing before Naruto's shadow clone punted it to another one holding a box with ceiling tags on it. Before Kakuzu could do anything, the shadow clone along with the box were both gone in a puff of smoke. What did you do? asked Kakuzu curiously. My shadow clone reversed summoned to the Toad Clan's mountain. They are going to use their sage arts to purify Haydn and severe his connection to Jashin. Are you upset? Questioned Naruto with Kakuzu shrugging. Honestly? No. Haydn would always curse, yell, shout, and be an annoyance whenever we partnered together. Going on about his religion and how great it was when compared to everything else. I'm honestly surprised the Akatsuki kept him. The world Payne wishes to create does not sit well with someone like Haydn being a part of it, answered Kakuzu while Naruto stood there watching him. Which explains why you never moved to help him, commented Naruto while Kakuzu shrugged again. He would have done the same to me if I were in his position. We were only put in the same pairing simply because we can't kill the other. Haydn had previous partners who died by his hand simply on impulse to appease his god. My five hearts prevented that, said Kakuzu while Naruto's smirk grew. Until now, said Naruto before rumbling came from the ground. Kakuzu's eyes widened when the ground erupted with dozen of chakra chains wrapped around him along with his various hearts. Struggling to escape, Kakuzu struggled to escape, but found it wasn't possible, and soon felt each heart being stabbed by the chakra chains. 
You were stalling so those chains would make their way through the ground to me, said Kakuzu while his remaining heart was being squeezed by the chakra chain around it. No shit. I'm an Uzumaki. If my mother can do this, why can I, asked Naruto before he commanded the chain to squeeze hard until the remaining heart it was crushing exploded. And thus killing the missing Nin of Taki. Thanks, Gaki. You are a lifesaver. If you weren't here, I would be finished, said Asumo while Naruto simply walked over to him. And punched the badly injured man in the face and knocking the jounin out. Shut up, whispered Naruto before walking away from the bleeding man to seal up Kakuzu's body just as the second generation Inoshikacho arrived. Whoa! What happened here? asked Ino while rushing to Asuma's side. The Akatsuki. They killed a former shinobi and guardian twelve turned fire monk. A good friend of mine. I intercepted them after they had sacked the fire temple. They were too much for me, said Asuma weakly while Ino went to work on healing him. But not for Naruto, asked Shikamaru curiously. He didn't even break a sweat said Asuma while deciding to keep the fact the blonde boy had punched him in the face or revealed their past altercation years ago. Really? What did Jiraiya-sama teach you? How did you get so strong? asked Choji to Naruto who finished sealing up the body and hearts of Kakuzu. He didn't teach me shit. The only thing that asshole did was drink in bars, peep on the women at hot springs, and sleep with whores with more STDs in their bodies than the overall populace of Kanoha. He took my money, left me alone at various points in time while dumped scrolls in my lap without any means of understanding the material. As to how I got so strong? I trained with the actual toad summons and learned more from them during my year and a half than I did with the perverted asshole, said Naruto coldly before he glanced at Asuma, who was looking a tad nervous. Naruto, asked Shikamaru curiously while seeing the look between the blonde and his former sensei. Don't worry about it, Shikamaru. Just remembering a certain moment in time not unlike now, but with different people in different positions. Talk to Saratobi there. He knows all about it. Afterwards, come see me. The story your former sensei tells you may have quite a few truths, retracted on his end in order to hide his shame, said Naruto before he left them to look at Asuma, who was again looking increasingly nervous. Asuma sensei, asked Ino with Asuma closing his eyes and letting out a sign. It's a complicated story. I'll tell you later. Just let me heal. I need to collect my thoughts on certain matters, said Asuma while looking up at the sky while Eno continued to heal him. And sometime later. This is unacceptable. We have lost practically over half our members in just a few short months. The rings taken from the corpses have been destroyed save the one off of Haydn's headless body, but that just be speculation at this point, said Payne angrily at how things had spiraled downward for them while Conan was watching him from a distance. We need to recruit new members. Find a way to replicate the destroyed rings, remarked Conan while Toby shook his head. Those rings were one of a kind. We can't make new ones yet. Not without doing some serious research and finding the means to make more. It could take years. Decades. Time you do not have. Time that we do not have, said Toby in rare serious tone. Where is Kisame? asked Conan since he wasn't here. He went out to capture Iwas to Jinchuriki alone. I was going to send Zetsu or even Toby here with him, but the man refused. He said taking on two Jinchuriki might make things interesting for him, said Payne while Conan narrowed her eyes. And you let him go, asked Conan while Payne nodded. There was no point in refusing him. Besides, if we sent either Toby or Zetsu with him, I have no doubt they would have been targeted by the man's sword. We do not need one of our stronger members deciding to lash out at those who remain like a wild animal. 
I trust Kisame to channel his bloodlust properly and report when possible to us once the job is completed, said Payne while knowing it was best to unleash Kisame against their enemies over stopping him. He would let the monster run free. Their enemies would hunt and eventually kill Kisame, but Payne also knew the monster of Kiri would take plenty of them down before that did happen. As a result, Payne knew the number of his enemies from the five shinobi villages would be diminished significantly. Shame. You were going to need him, commented Jiraiya, who came out of the shadows with a serious look on his face. Hello, Sensei. It's been a long time, commented Payne while Zetsu and Toby decided it was time to vanish back into the shadows. Not long enough. I see you have changed since the last time we saw each other. At least Conan became every bit as beautiful as I believed, replied Jiraiya with a small smile to the woman. If you are done having perverted thought about Conan, I think it's time you explained your presence here, said Payne while Jiraiya's smile left him. To fix some mistakes I made in the past. Namely with you, answered Jiraiya with Payne staring at him impassively. You have known of our activities for some time. Yet you are personally interfering now of all times? Why you questioned Conan while Payne watched Jiraiya's body movements? Personal reasons, commented Jiraiya while Payne knew that while it was the truth, it was also a lie. Half-truths Jiraiya Sensei. You always hated it when we told you lies or half-truths. Don't tell me you have become a hypocrite since the last time we saw you, commented Payne, as he recalled the time when Jiraiya always demanded they tell him the truth, and hated how the three orphans of AIM would try to deceive him. Enough talking. Time to end this, said Jiraiya while Payne nodded. Agreed. Conan, do not interfere, ordered Payne while Conan nodded and took several steps back. You underestimate me, Nagato. You always did, said Jiraiya with a smirk before he summoned Pa and Ma to his shoulders. Nagato is dead. I am pain. As to underestimating you, I was a child believe you were someone to look up to when growing up. Now I find myself staring at a man who plays the fool to hide his failures and inadequacies during his lifetime of being in the shadow of everyone around him, commented Payne while seeing Pa and Ma Toad remaining calm despite Jiraiya's scowl. And did they secretly place something on the back of Jiraiya? After today, I will show why I am the strongest of my three teammates despite the fact I was the dead last of my Jin and team, said Jiraiya with Payne looking unafraid. Hardly something to boast about. Orochimaru was the weakest of us when he joined for our protection once going rogue from your village. He is focused on staying young and dissecting things over expanding his actual skills. Tsunade was a drunk and gambler for over a decade, so her skills have no doubt declined. You haven't improved on anything since the Yandame Hokage was alive. You are the strongest of your three teammates due to their skills being rusty or neglected while yours have stagnated, said Payne mockingly while Jiraiya grit his teeth. We'll see, said Jiraiya before he used his imperfect version of Sinin Moto after he had gathered enough Senjutsu during their conversation. Not see. More like, I know, said Payne before his other six paths suddenly appeared and now made Jiraiya a tad nervous. Ah crap, thought Jiraiya while he braced himself for the fight that was to come. This fight was going to hurt. You have got this far. Please comment ramen and consider subscribing. This is the end and I will see you next time on the final part.